WPGU 107-1. And from the big pond in Champaign, Illinois, for the last time in the 2017-18 season, it's Saturday night, Illini Hockey, presented by YouTube and WPGU 107-1. Hi, everybody. I'm Christian Osamnetta. Stephen Cohn will join me in just a second. Following a 3-0 win over the Robert Morris University Eagles last night, the Illini will look to sweep the weekend series over their CSCHL rival. Illinois ranked fifth coming into this weekend. Robert Morris sixth coming in to Friday and Saturday night's games. It was a great night for Illinois last night. Arguably their most complete game of the season. James McGain leading the way with three points in the first game of the senior weekend for him. How good was he on Friday night? Well, he's been really, really good basically all of 2018. I'd say go back just all season, entire Illini career, because some could say for James McGing. But last night he did all. He was contributing to offense. He scored. He was helping out his teammates, played some great defense, got Illinois in a few breakout situations, and they were really able to attack. Uh, to attack Robert Morris' goalie last night, Chris Mallon, and routes of three goals. That was Stephen Cohn's voice. You will hear Eric Fisher down at ice level. Mackenzie Bach as well in the first and second intermissions alongside with Abby Kelso. Right now, it's the Illini Hockey pregame show. Last home game of the season, Illinois. We already alluded to it. A great game against Robert Morris, shutting them out. Jake Barnhart, the situation kind of forced uh, because of David Eflin's injury to just start starting these games. Ross Lipic's been battling some issues as well. Jake Barner became the last man standing kind of for Illinois. He has not disappointed. He's won his two He's, he's won his first two CSCHL starts. We'll go for number three tonight. We apologize for that brief technical difficulty on the YouTube side of things. If you're listening in on WPG 107.1, it's a spotless road <laughs> broadcast so far, but what else can you expect? First year doing video, it was a successful one, and we appreciate all the listeners and viewers. We'll get to that a lot later. Oh, yeah. Before we can even get to tonight, Stephen, the hockey game to come between the Illini and the Robert Morris University Eagles, we have eight seniors, well, seven seniors, one junior, graduating from the program after this this season. Before we get to all of them individually, we'll see uh, their parents as well, members of their family on the ice. And of course, you may see a graphic up on YouTube of a still image. Illini Hockey is coming up next. It is coming up uh -huh. next, as well as the senior ceremonies. Out of these eight seniors, I may ask you this a couple times throughout Ooh. the broadcast, which one do you think will leave their biggest mark on the program after their four years? Wow, overall or just tonight? We'll go overall. Wow. Oh, start my. Big. oh, wow. Okay, big picture kind of thing. I'm going Eric Crookshank. I don't know if anyone has been... Uh say James McGing's been such a dynamic offensive threat, uh, but Eric Crookshank stuck on 69 career goals, looking for 70 now for the past few weeks, and uh, I just think overall, 
he's a guy that you're going to look back on if you uh, care about line of hockey in 10, 15 years at the club level. You're going to be like, that's the guy that really made the biggest impact. Eric Crooks, James think? McGing. Well, it's tough yeah. because you have a captain in Joey Rittendale, yeah. an alternate captain and a goaltender, David Heflin, who has been a rock for this club over the past couple of years when Joe Olin went down with injury, when his play slipped. It was David Heflin's turn. Similar to how you're seeing Jake Barnhart, if you're just joining us and maybe you missed last night's game, maybe you missed the week before, Jake Barnhart will get the start tonight. David Heflin's still nursing that lower body injury. Right now you're listening in to the Illini Hockey pregame show. Cristiano Simonetta, Stephen Cohen alongside Eric Fisher down at ice level. Illinois, Robert Morris, it's always going to be a tightly contested contest. Last night, though, how was Illinois able to take control of the game early and keep their foot on the gas? Well, I think James McGain really kind of uh, took his will and just put it on top of the Eagles last night, and that was big, but the line early in the game, they were peppering Chris Allen, getting a lot of shots on goal, and uh, they just made it difficult for him, and they, they were really winning puck possession, the, that battle last night. Keeping it in their offensive zone, having extended shifts for the Eagles, parts of the second period, uh, those shifts started to fit, that shift time started to favor the Eagles, but overall, Illini did a really good job last night of keeping Robert Morris' guys on the ice, making them tired, and getting a few goals. But when Jake Barnhart had to be good, he was exactly that, Dan Doyle with a couple of chances, as well as Alex Anderson on a near breakaway attempt. For Jake Barnhart moving ahead to the maybe CSCHL playoffs, we don't know. David Heflin skating, he will dress and he will take part in the senior festivities. You see him in the middle of your screen right now. Jake Barnhart, it's his team right now. How confident do you have to be? A 7-0 start to the year, .98 goals against average. It seems like everything's going right for him. What happens if he allows a first goal? Well, this is the guy I think I asked Mackenzie Bach last night. How do you guys get yourself ready for the situation where you're just kind of put into a situation? And uh, you just keep telling yourself that you're at this level for a reason. If you give up that first goal, that's okay because you have so many great offensive players on your team in a McGing, in a Crookshank, in a Riddendale that there's so many playmakers and uh, it's their senior night also. They want to put on a show and they're there to have your back. A nice crowd here at the University of Illinois Ice Arena, dubbed the Big Pond. We're glad you can join us in Champaign, Illinois. Christian Samantha with you, Stephen Cohn, as well as Eric Fisher alongside. And this is going to be a special night because senior night, it's always the bit of nostalgia. Everything and all that creeps in. You have head coach Nick Fabrini speaking right now. He's had a very successful tenure with the Illini, not only as a coach, as a player, won two national championships, one in 2005, another in 2008. How would you evaluate his performance this season with all the new guys that have been thrown into the program? Well, I think when you Maybe not based on success for the past four years. They made the tournament every year. They're always very competitive. They're great at home. Uh, but overall, the high character men that he's creating on this program and this team, uh, they're some of the best guys that this campus has to offer. And I think that's something they're proud of and Nick Fabrini's proud of as well, kind of uh, making them into those collegiate hockey players and treating them as such. But uh, overall, was that the question? Yeah, yeah, no, that was good. Yeah, he's doing a great job. You, you he, knocked it right out of the park it's here, a great, Stephen. Great program. And it really is one that head coach Nick Fabrini took from the reins early as we see Joey Rittendale being honored and the captain to start us off. I thought he'd be the one to be lastly honored because of the fact that uh, he is the captain. But Going to numerical order, it looks like. I, and I would have as well, but, yeah. you know, sometimes with programs you go – uh, the numbers first, and then alternate and captains. Nonetheless, Joey Rittendale, 12 goals, 35 assists. More importantly, seven goals this season. Mm. A career high, actually, more than he scored in the past three previous seasons combined. His offense has just taken up to another notch in his senior year. And we've always talked about his leadership skills the past two years since he became captain prior to his junior season. And uh, just the kind of impact he's made on all the younger guys in this team. As well as the older guys, he's kind of been that uh, that stepping stone in a few areas. There were the Olin brothers that were really a big part of this program for a few years before Randale and during his underclassmen years. And the past two years, it's really been Joey Randale's team in a lot of ways, and he kind of stepped up to the plate and hit it right out of the park. How about Joey Caprio, number five in your program, possibly number one in your hearts. Oh, I know no. in the Caprio family, they love the heck out of him. Two points in his last four games. More importantly, though, 10 goals, 30 assists, and 131 games played. Career high, 17 points in his junior year out of Bolingbrook, Illinois. A lot of local kids, 28 Illinois-born on this hockey team. You don't really expect that despite the state university, the uh, University of Illinois has, of course. But 
Caprio, not known for his offensive prowess, but his defensive stability is something that you have to only marvel at. He is the active leading uh, Illini player in games. Uh, excuse me, on defense, Eric Cruikshank beats him by two. Wow, oh, that's rough, because they're buds. They're buds out there in the ice. That just shows you the durability oh, yeah. of this senior class. No, but Joey Caprio, also someone that... Uh, he wasn't in. He wasn't in the best shape, of course, uh, in the beginning of his junior season. Had to really work on that to get himself back in hockey shape. In the past uh, year and a half or so, past three semesters, he's really been outstanding in that top four defense for the Illini. And James McGing, possibly the most decorated. He leads them actively in points. 49 goals, 98 assists. He's right on the cusp of a pair of milestones. Looking for that 50th goal. Looking for that 100th assist. And he's amassed it, Stephen, in only 128 games and you may think that a guy his consistency may day die off in perhaps the middle of campaigns but in his last six games he has points in all of them and 11 points to boot right as the season becomes the most important he has been nothing else but James McGain. Yeah, he's been spectacular his entire lineup career and how much it's not that he's always scoring, but other teams have to account for James McGing always being on the ice, and that's such a hassle when you have such uh, just a brilliant offensive playmaker and teammate like James McGing. So James McGing has been honored, as well as Joey Caprio. Joey Rittner, if you're just joining us, the senior ceremonies, the Illini, facing off against Robert Morris in a couple minutes. I know you're expecting puck drop for a lot of you fans at 7 o'clock. It's senior night. Everything's going to be pushed back, and of course... Not only is the puck drop pushed back, Eric Crookshank slicking the hair back for oh, tonight. I love the look, looks Eric. Good. Out of Burlington, Ontario, of course, grew up Can't in Vernon that. Hills. Yeah. Well, yeah. he was. Yeah, no, he was, yeah. He grew Just, up in Vernon yeah. Hills his yeah. entire uh, yeah. life, of course, and his parents supported him the entire way. Every single one of these kids, yeah. their parents and their families are the only reasons that they're standing right there on this big pond ice. Eric Crookshank, 69 goals, 67 assists, and 133 games played. 24 power play goals. He has been that Ovechkin-esque option for Illinois, and a reason why teams don't want to put the Illini on the power play to begin with. Yeah, that's that's rough, but also, uh, how many game-winning goals does he have in his Illini career? We call him Mr. Third Period for a reason, and the guy's electric during the third period. Oh, and that's a pretty, that's a pretty big ovation for uh, number 15. He was the only offensive option, I think, from sophomore year to junior year. It was him, Grant Stuve, James McGee. After John Olin graduated the captain, you lost a lot of guys. Jacob Matiziak, another one, uh, my freshman year in 2014-15. Everybody knew that Eric Cruikshank was the offensive prowess and, and was the offensive gunner for Illinois, and you still couldn't stop him. This year, he's taken a little bit of a step back, rounding out his two-way game, and an example of that is his penalty minutes, 42, a career low, and that's a far away yeah. from 90-plus that he was uh, racking in in his sophomore and junior year. Say the same thing about James McGing as well. The two have been able to stay in the ice, and that makes them so much more impactful for the Illini. On your screen right now, David Counter, the junior out of Elk Grove, 21 games played this season, 15 points, 37 points in 62 career games played. He had 18 points last year he's a guy who has bounced around in injuries upper body lower body he's always been a warrior and I think he's still nursing a lower body to this day 5'10 175 pounds but he hits a lot more than that he's not the guy that's going to shy away from physicality in the corners and when he's in the lineup you can bet that Illinois is going to be more competitive per se and I love I've loved watching him and Bobby Ernstein really grow together uh, on what's been the second line for a lot of the season. And uh, a guy that's really going to be missed uh, not having a fourth year with this Illini program. On your screen right now, and listening in, of course, on WPG 1071, highlighting the seniors of the Illini hockey program. Just a couple more to go. There's eight players graduating. You want to talk about a team guy, it's Andrew Wickler. Mm -hmm. He accepts his role. And he may not wow you with his statistical numbers here, but whenever his number's called, 71 games, 11 points, three points a season in 20 games, scored a couple of weekends ago against Illinois State, had to be yeah. a big goal for him, and he's dressed in the lineup tonight out of the Chicago suburbs as well. You're never going to see Drew Wicklin with a frown on his face. He's always the guy in the locker room to keep everybody upbeat, and I think that's one of the most important parts of a locker room. Yeah, every team needs that kind of guy. He's going to be in the fourth line tonight, so he'll be rewarded with one last chance maybe to uh, get another goal. But just overall, you, you can't measure the effect of those kind of guys. You can with someone like James McGang and all the points he puts up, but someone that just helps that confidence and brings a smile to everyone's face like Andrew Wicklin, that's, uh, that's priceless. 
a great night tonight already. If you're just joining us, the Illini Hockey pregame show has evolved into the senior festivities of four puck drop between the Illini and the Robert Morris University Eagles. Grant Stuve, a locker room guy as well, but one that could put pucks in the back of the net too. Seven goals, 16 assists this season, nine points versus the CSCHL in 110 games played in his career. 32 goals, 52 assists out of Roselle. He is Eric Crookshank's right-hand man. Hold on and off the ice. He didn't do his hair tonight, though, so <laughs> I... We'll call it, we'll chalk it up to senioritis. Yeah, no, yeah, that's fine. But no, he's an incredible player. He's uh, he's really had a fantastic senior season. Uh, but him and Eric Crookshank, that is a duo uh, that you can just count on uh, in the top line the past few years every single game. Of course, Crookshank and Stuve met in 2012 in the Bloomington Steel tryouts. Both of them were cut after having a successful week. Nonetheless, they bounced around in the same spot. After Crookshank was recruited, Stuve joined him. And it's been a match made in heaven ever since. Who said it was successful? Was that them, or were you there? Oh, no, they they, they showed me the box scores. Oh, okay. Trust me, they, no, they okay. deserve yeah. to be on that team. But of course, Nick Fabrini and ourselves very are very thankful that they didn't play longer in USHL slash NAHL. And David Heflin, great career for him in that. I already mentioned it. Joe Olin was the guy. Nick Clark was the guy for Illinois. David Heflin coming up as a sophomore. I it will be the first one to admit when I saw him in the first couple weeks, I had some skepticism about his game. He blew me away right after that when Joe Olin got hurt. A dominant performance. Two regulation losses last season. And now Without him, it seems, the Illini are lost. But, of course, that was before Jake Barnhart came into the fold. How special has David Heflin's game been to you as an outsider? Because goaltender is often regarded as the hardest position to play in hockey. Well, when I showed up uh, last year, basically two years ago at this point, uh, I was told, oh, well, Joe Olin's the best player in this Illini team. There's no one else in the ACHA like Joe Olin. You'll ever find another goaltender at this level like Joe Olin. And you know what? There's David Eflin, who's just as good, if not better. He's been outstanding uh, the past two seasons, essentially. And uh, this year, this team would not be number five in the country right now, if not for David Eflin. 27-12-3, 2.63 goals against average, .912 save percentage, two shutouts. And the Illini were allowing 40-plus shots a game last season. And it was David Heflin's burden to bear. And he never complained, never had his head down, was always a great guy in terms of his mentality. And Amanda Wang also being honored. Uh, the Ice Girls this season, first year that they've been doing it. And they do a great job on the marketing side as well. And you can see the fans always love to take pictures with them. It's reminiscent of the Chicago Blackhawks and the promotions that they do. Now look at Joey Rittendale handing off the flowers. It's just a fun night, Stephen. And I don't think I'd want to be in any other spot right now. Oh, yeah. It's an incredible atmosphere right now. You got the new ice service finishing up its first year, the new refrigeration system, and uh, just, it's been a great year of Illini hockey. They, they just honored you. They just honored me. Wow. I really appreciate it, Nick Fabrini. Do you want me to talk about you for a few sure, seconds? Sure, why not? Well, yeah, I'm right next to me, to my left right now, I have Cristiano Simonetta, who's, uh, I was going to save this for the end of the broadcast, but do I do it now? Sure, why I not? I don't know, wow. I, oh. Wow. Well, I don't know what else to say about you. This guy right here to the left, most dedicated guy I've ever met uh, in the journalism profession, and uh, he's going to do amazing things, already has, and a great hockey broadcast to career ahead. So Thank you, Steve. I really with appreciate it. But we're not done No, yet. oh, that's it. No, we he got goes one right back game. to the game. Chris Mallon oh, no. coming out. We're glad you can join us. Oh. Senior festivities done. Game time now. Christian Simonetta, Stephen Cohn, Eric Fisher, down at ice level. Mallon in the net to the left, Jake Barnhart in the net to the right. There's no surprises there, but the senior weekend, senior night, the last game, a lot of these seniors will play in this very rink. If there's a pick to click, Stephen Cohn, who's it going to be and why? Well, I got to go with a senior in that case. Can't choose anyone else. It's Eric Crookshank, 70th career goal tonight. Otherwise, I'm going to go uh, Joey Randale, maybe Andrew Wicklin, maybe James McGang. Joey Capper maybe gets Why not all of them get on the score sheet? I think Illinois is going to score eight tonight. David Eflin is going to somehow come out and play some forward. He'll play one score minute of goal yeah. center to get that stat sheet. Uh, but back He's pitch a shutout. Oh, well, you changed David it. Eflin already. He's, day, yeah. he's not even playing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, back to the play on the ice. Robert Morris University Eagles. Gavin Burback is a player that you want to circle. 32 games played this season. 31 points. And Illinois... Surprisingly to me, they were able to keep him off the score sheet and the rest of the RMU Eagles as well, despite not having Joe Nolan on the back end. Jack Graham is a guy who we've talked about throughout the season, elevating his game in the first season at Division One. How big is that to have depth on the back end, something that Illinois has not 
boasted about in any particular way over the past couple of years. Well, you just I think last night was a perfect example. All the shots that were blocked by Illinois' defensemen uh, really helping out Jake Barnhart and just making his job so much easier because he made some great saves last night. Don't get me wrong. But to have guys like Joey Caprio blocking five, six shots in one night by himself, huge help. We get the starting lineups, and look at this. Andrew Wickland, Eric Cruikshank, James McGing, Joey Caprio, and Joey Rittendale. Come on, you gotta pick Grant Stuve, throw him in that in there. Maybe David Kellner, too. <laughs> Maybe an illegal start to the game, but I don't think it'd be a bad two minutes to take. No, that would be the worst. You know? A Andrew Wickland, what's this like for him right now, getting a chance to start with two of the most talented hockey players at this level, Grant, or Eric Cruikshank, James McGing? Oh, well, he's gotta be buzzing off that opening draw. And I think he's going to throw the first hit as well to get this Illini crowd underneath him. James McGain's going to be off the opening puck drop as ready as anybody. But for Robert Morris, they were shellacked 3-0. Chris Mound was the only reason why this game wasn't 5-0, 6-0. It was 3-0. Chico Adratis, not very happy with his team after this one. What do you expect to happen off that opening faceoff both sides? I expect Robert Morris much more aggression tonight. Uh, they took one, Holt took one bad penalty last night on the slashing call in the middle of the ice, and that was Koaz right at the block eye. Uh, but other than that, um, pretty clean game last night. I expect a much more uh, physical game tonight from the Eagles. And we'll send it down ice level for the start of the National Anthem before we get the senior night underway between the Robert Morris University Eagles and the University of Illinois Fighting Illini. This time, ladies and gentlemen, are just about ready for puck drop here at the Big Pond here in Champaign, Illinois. Christian Simonetta with you. Stephen Cohen alongside Eric Fisher down at ice level. You've heard it enough. Now it's time for some hockey. Number six, RMU versus number five, Illinois. In the net to the left, it's Chris Mallon. And he had a great night last night, allowing three goals, picking up the loss, but it wasn't for a lack of trying. 14-6-0 and oh on the season, as well as an outstanding goals against average, under two goals a game, and a save percentage over .920. Jake Barnhart, 7-0-0 oh oh on the season, .98 goals against average, .949 save percentage. Those are video game-like numbers from the guy they call Barney. And Robert Morris getting to get a lot more deception on their shots tonight, get a lot more traffic going in front of that they can't just sell for shots and uh, uh at the blue line they gotta really go with barnard and make him work because last night he was terrific but they got even better tonight if they want to score all senior starting lineup aside from barnhart going against nathan chastine cody malsby as well as Gavin Burbeck, Chico Adratis has mixed up his top lines as we're underway here and quickly a stoppage seven seconds into the first period and that was rather anticlimactic uh, to start off yeah. senior night. Yeah, he said Andrew Wicklin was going to get a big hit to, uh, first in seven seconds. But wait, let's see if that pace actually favors the Eagles tonight. If there's more stoppages in play, that's better for Robert Morris. Dylan Holt along the neutral zone across Boborowski. Clears one down, rattling off the dasher. 
And Joey Caprio gloves it to himself and pitches it to the far side corner where it's Andrew Wicklin to take. One hand on his stick, taps one around Borowski, goes all the way down. Will it be icing? It's finally waved off as Nathan Chastain reaches the puck on the far side corner in the RMU zone. A half a minute into this first period, James McGing on the forecheck as usual, out in front, and that shot was knocked away as Crookshank had about three Eagles swarming him. And we get a whistle, 19-21. Left in the first period, another stoppage. The faceoff will come out to neutral ice. And that's all it took for James McGing to create an opportunity for Illinois. Just took one puck behind. That's the center for Eric Crookshank. That's what happens when you play together for so long. Chance Homer and Stephen Quinn and Drew Richter. An interesting trio, but one that worked to perfection in last night's game. And that's because Stephen Quinn had a terrific night after uh, being a healthy scratch for a few straight weekends. He's back in the ice. He's playing really well. Homerin and Scordillis duel behind the net. Puck comes free for Nick Yanni along the near side. Yanni parlays one along the corner, but it's gloved down by Caprio and slapped back in. Scordillis to the far side, rung back around to the near side where it's Caprio on another pinch. Yanni protecting it well. The senior forward out of Bloomingdale. Surely wants to get a goal against his state university. It's an interesting relationship as we get a whistle 112 into the first period between RMU and Illinois. Not far in proximity, but it doesn't seem the biggest rivalry of sorts. No. So once these two teams get together, there's going to be some physicality. Yeah, I don't know any other uh, Illinois sport club or NCAA that would ever play the Robert Morris Eagles, none of them, uh, but in hockey. These are two of the top maybe 10 programs in the country. As well as the entire CSCHL with the exception of Iowa State. Here is Connor McGovern at his own blue line. In the neutral zone, Ryan Martin on the red line, blue line, right wing side of the Illini zone. James again blocked down a pass. And it's Rittendale up the middle, missing Stuve and wide of Malin. So through one minute and 27 seconds, we've had about five whistles. So a bit of a lull. You like to mention the words feeling out process. Do you characterize this game as such to start? Well, I think just Robert Morris getting chances off face-offs. That's how they're going to create against the Illinois defense that's so well. If Robert Morris just gets stuck, has to pass and cycle, it's not going to uh, bode very well for the Eagles. Rittendale to Graham along the near side for Stuve. Grant Stuve up for Crookshank. All over the block eye, blue line. Martin dips one back to the far side. 18-20 left in the first period. Nice pass from McGovern, and Turner tips the puck in. Jack Graham, the junior defenseman, first year in the Division I club, played the previous two in the Division II Illini roster. Alex Anderson to the far side. It is Stover. A bit of a tie-up here. Anderson one-on-one -on -one the other way, right circle, coming in against Barnhart as well as Graham, but Graham with a nice active stick to negate that one-on-one -on -one try. And he'll play it over for Rittendale. Yeah, dangerous play by Graham. If he misses that, it becomes a difficult uh, save for Barnard, but really nice play. Bobby Ernsting tied up a bit by Mike Cachado in his first action of the weekend. 17-40 left in the first period. No score between the Illini and the Eagles. Lefik can counter. Crossover, and now it's Kendati. His pass was knocked away to the near side, but finally squirting out to center. Dylan Holt gains the line for the Eagles. Surrounded by four members of the Illini and has his stick knocked away from him. John Moskov has to double back in his own zone. And toss it for Kandati, the sophomore defenseman out of Arlington Heights. Misplayed that pass across to Turek. And he'll try it again, but off the back of Jake Barnhart into the center. But another risky pass from Illinois, who have been playing with fire over the past 30 minutes against Robert Morris, but it's been Barnhart time and time again to bail them out. Yeah, a lot more uh, hectic play going on right now. And that pass from Bobby Ernstine behind, that's to Mark Kandati. If that's intercepted, that's a wide open net uh, that Jake Barnhart can't save. Another whistle, another offside. 17-04. In the first period, or left in the first period, I should say. Neil Novosel and the rest of the fourth line will get some chances. Thomas Kolas out there with Novosel and Moskala. And Evan Sabo, uh, the 13th forward tonight, Andrew Wicklund uh, stepping in on the fourth line. Good observation by you. Here is Opilka to the red line. Moskala and Novosel only getting in as far as the half wall. Big hit there by Moskalk out in front. Here's Novacell, but now Kolas holding onto it. On the near side, 16.45 left in the first period. His shot is blocked away to the end boards. And Novacell with Chastine. Kolas escapes, has some space. Up top for the senior, Caprio shoots one and a pad save there by Mallon in the first official shot of the game for Illinois. Moskalk, rung one along the high glass. To the right side, it's Opilka, chipping one past a pair of Eagles. Chastine ties him up. And a nice elusive move there from number 10 in maroon and gold. 
The break up the other way as Malsby takes a tumble over the invisible blue line. It is Burback along the right circle. He shot one in wide 14. Uh, excuse me, 16-14 left in the first. Yeah, really good chance. Malsby just couldn't stay in his feet. Burback lofts one ahead. Malsby pitching and diving the puck around Caprio and sends one down low. Here is Opilka. Pirouetting around Josh Hart to the near side, bottom of your screen. Hart is going to steal it away from Opilka. Three on three for RMU. Hart trying to drive the goal line, was hooked a bit by Opilka, who took the only minor for Illinois, and it came in a coincidental. So no power plays for Robert Moore so far in this weekend series, but they keep playing like that, aggressive in the Illini zone. They're going to draw stuff. Here is Holmgren, 15.35 left in the first period. No score between the Illini and the Eagles. Richter had the puck swept away from him. And Doyle against Graham. And Yanni lost the puck to Stuve, who dumps one in for Lucas Stover. Stover, the freshman defenseman out of California, who had three points in one game against Indiana Tech in early January. Other than that, not exactly the offensive dynamo that Chico Adratis hopes to see on the back end. Eagles gain the line right side. Doyle down low for Sam Turner. Turner who scored a goal against Illinois earlier in the season series in January in Bensonville. He was dominant alongside with Alex Anderson in that Friday match. They won 5-2. Swept to the right side, caught by Turner. And a reversal there, but James Gink is going to come in contact with the puck. Over the neutral zone, dumped in. Stuve is going to get pulled down, and a penalty coming on the Eagles. 14-46 left in the first period. Illinois to their fourth power play of the weekend. Hey, it worked once last night, one time right after the power play expired. Illinois was able to get another goal. But what you're seeing even strength right now is a much more aggressive forecheck by the Eagles, pinching at the blue line and getting opportunities going another way. Uh, that's something we didn't really see as much of last night. Uh, last night they played much more conservatively. Yeah, and the start to this game was very sloppy, so the Illini are going to be working and maybe get something going on this power play, because if not, then this game could possibly favor Robert Morris playing a lot more slower-paced game while the Illini are used to playing their fast pace on this wide ice. So the Illini are going to try and use this power play to really get themselves in a flow in this game. And the biggest start to it is a face-off win. Rittenell winds and fires. That one's eaten up by Malin six seconds after the power play on Dylan Holt, two minutes for holding. Rittendale lets one go, trying to bring its crowd to the feet. 14.39 left in the first period. Beautiful set play to get that to Rittendale with the right circle. Stuve wins another draw. Rittendale right side. Joey Rittendale to the far side. Thomas Kolas. Saucer right on the tape of Rittendale. And right as I say that, it's Nathan Chastain on the jump. Two on two. A forward back. Chastain deking around Rittendale. Tight angle goes over the glove of Barnhart, which is a spot where RMU was targeting last night. And even Nick Yanni hit the goalpost as he tried in the third period. Stuve, gain the line. Here comes the senior, shoots, and another save there by Malin. No rebound allowed. And that's what you expect, a 6'3", 205-pound netminder. Those shots from the high circles aren't going to create a lot of rebounds unless they're low on the ice. Yeah, if, it, if Stuve gets that lower, I think it's a great chance for either Kellner or Kolas. Uh, we're both skating right to a net to get a little tip in. Ernsting on the draw. He won it momentarily. And it comes free here for Yanni. And chips it down the ice. Glove by Opilka. In the neutral zone for Ernsting. Bobby Ernsting tied with Drew Richter for the team leading goals with 12. He goes across for Crookshank. His pass just escaped Moskluck. McGing holding onto it down low for Bobby. Looking for a backdoor play. Ernsting is pressured there by Borowski. He sends one back for Opilka straight away on this umbrella. Opilka and McGing play pitch and catch. Opilka through traffic. Blocker saved there by Malin. 53 seconds left in the Illini power play. 13.35 left in the first. Well, on the near side, Crookshank. And Opilka walking the line. Johnny Cash asks. Now it's Ernsting. Far side option in McGing. He scored the first goal tonight. Out for upper Moskaluk. His stick was tied up in a rebound try. That ends up on the end boards. It's gloved here by Borowski. Of course, we're not closing his hand on the puck. Ernsting, tight angle, shoots off the goal post. Bobby Ernsting gets the puck right back. 25 seconds left in the Illini power play. It's Opilka. Straight away again. Ernsting, left circle, has to settle the puck down. Opilka. And Bobby, quick pass, McGing had the puck explode off his stick, and Joshua Hart couldn't get to it. A nice advantage there for McGing, the right-handed shot there. But Crookshank tossed the puck into the middle, where it's excavated by Bo Borowski, and that will do it for the first Illini power play of the night. That was a great power play. It stayed Illinois' offensive zone, essentially, the other entire time. Nice move by Opilka, trying to drive! Oh, and he was sticked away by a pair of Eagles. Back to full strength with 12.38 left in the first period. 
Ernsting down low along the near side. He's going to be able to change. RMU not pressuring the Illini defense despite the fact that they changed a pair of bodies in the offensive zone. Nice move by McGing around Malty to create space. Going down low along the goal line for Homerin. Starting the cycle with Richter. Drew Richter out of Darien, Illinois. The freshman dropping one for McGing. Spirals one in along the end boards. It is Homer. The sophomore out of Pekin. And McGing on his back end. Spin around drive. Looking for possibly a redirection in the low slot. Comes for Rittendale. Going down low again. Richter out in front, and Homer almost had a drive, and Stephen Kuhn with the blast, and that one is gloved by Chris Mallon. Eight minutes exactly into the first period, no score between the Illini and the Eagles, but Jake Barnhart hasn't had to be tested so far. Yeah, and that, that sequence right after the power play expired still felt like a power play for Illinois. Uh, they're going to be able to use that center of the ice. It was a soft spot. Uh, the Eagles were kind of leaving that right open, and a lot of shots in the slot. Homer on the draw to the left of Mallon. He won it. Rittendale looking for a seeing eye shot. Where is it? It's blocked down in front by number three. That was Ryan Martin. Up for Tony Dahlberg. Top of your screen for Martin again. Goal line. Oh, a high shot there. Directed off the shaft of the stick of Barnhart. And into the near side. And back out in the eagle zone. Where Scordillis accidentally cleared the puck into Mallon. And lost his footing as he did so. Staying on his two feet now. He'll take it along the near side circuit. A yeah, dangerous pass right there at the goal line by Scordillis has almost uh, got past Mellon. They're going to ice the puck here. The Eagles will do 11-29 left in the first period. Christian Semeta with you. Stephen Cohn alongside Eric Fisher down at ice level. Senior night here at the Big Pond and a big crowd as well. Yeah, and the Eagles have been able to get changes the past few minutes, but they still look tired on defense. Illinois doing a really good job of cycling the puck, gain shots on them. Novacell, Wicklin, and Sabo on this fourth line for Illinois. Graham. On that near side corner for Wicklin. Intercepted here by the Eagles. They try and counter two on three. Turner dumps one in late on a shift. He'll go off. Rittendale pressured by Martin. And laid up along the far side for Sabo. Sabo, first year transfer from Illinois State. Nice move through the middle, but he lost the puck. What will Jake Barnhart do? He's going to come out and play it. And he chips one into the neutral zone. A smart play from him as Dahlberg had to tag up before RMU was able to get that clear intent. Here is Caprio, far side for Wicklin. And Novacell gains the red line. Sends the puck down, ricocheting off the end boards. Dylan Holt fresh off that holding minor. He's out for some even strength play turnover. Bobby Ernsting shoots one. That was blocked down. As the rest of his comrades were changing. Burback over the blue line in the Illini zone. He gets tripped up. And Barnhart will just cover this one. A legal play there from Caprio and Opilka. 10.32 left in the first period. Zeros across the scoreboard here. And I, the, Jake Barnhart all weekend long, mistake-free. He's been playing excellent as a guy that did, he, he's, he's only one, he had one week to prep for this, but it's not like he's ever been in the ice against Robert Morris before. So put in this situation, a bunch of guys he's never seen doing a great job. Doyle, Yanni, and Hart. Playing it back to the left side. Borowski, smart play there. And Hart submerged by a pair of Illini on the back check. And it's cleared in the neutral zone, maybe a two-on-one for the Eagles, partial. Here is Doyle, shot was blocked by Kandati, he settles the puck back down the right side. Then spins one out in front, redirected by Turek. Out of the stick of counter for Kolas. Into the middle, and Malin will do the same thing Barnhart did, and just swallow and jump on that bouncing puck. 10.08 left in the first period. Those home run passes, those cross corner ones, aren't exactly working for both teams, but they've tried them anyway throughout these first nine minutes and 52 seconds. Yeah, I like the aggression by the line. I and Mike Turk just throwing ahead to the blue line game that started and uh, just didn't pay off for Illinois. Top line for Illinois. Out on the ice, Stover for McGovern. Connor McGovern. 33 games played this season, four goals, 13 assists, currently on an 11-game goal drought as he ices the puck. 9.56, left in the first period. That's got to be about what? 10, 11, 12 whistles. We're only halfway through the first period. Yeah, it's already 7.40, and we're only 10 minutes uh, into the game. Slow. Get comfy, Illini fans. Yeah. This is going to be <laughs> a bit of a doozy here on senior night. Stuve on the tie-up. Or rather, that was Crookshank. Near side corner, McGing and McGovern. Slaps one across for Stover. The freshman defenseman. Out of the far side, Hart and Yanni interchange. Josh Hart, an Illini killer on an eight-game goal drought unlike him. 19 points in 29 games. A shot on goal on the left pad saved by Barnhart and cleared aside by Kandati all the way down the ice. And McGovern will hit the hash marks for an icing. So that's a part of Jake Barnhart's game we've seen. Kicking out those pillows. He's a very athletic goaltender, similar 
to David Heflin. And an example of that there. Well, they're the same size. When you go when you have Ross Lippings, you get a much taller, bigger goaltender. So differences in how teams prepare. Uh, but Illinois is able to defend the same way as they would if uh, David Heflin was in the crease. Stuve for Kandati. Off the chip play to the near side. Scordillis has the puck. Skitter over his stick. Lenny will go for a full sail change. Red line, blue line, right side, Anderson. Wax one in wide of the cage. It is Ernsting on the rebound attempt at the neutral zone. Bobby almost off sides and exactly that is counter. So unable to hold that left blade on. 9.09 left in the first period. It seems, Stephen, 30 seconds, 50 seconds, and then we get a stoppage. We saw a period in last night's game where it was four minutes, five minutes without even a whistle. Yeah, well, what's Anderson doing at the blue line? I think that's a good shot right now on Barnhart. Uh, really get to him, make it tough for him. Here is Cole Laz, but a wow. couple of ticks later off the clock. We're going to be here till about midnight. It's 9.04 left in the first period. Eric Fisher, what do you have for this slow start on both sides? I mean, the line don't have any problem getting control of the puck. They're struggling to really set up any sort of offense once they get into Robert Morris's defensive zone. Robert Morris is pressuring them really well along the blue line and along the boards, and the line giving the line I fits. A far shot from Thomas Colas ricochets off the chest of Mallon, and it's the Eagles to attack once more. They wrap one in along the near side where it's Graham. Backhanding one. In the line eye zone. The Eagles almost have possession of it. Comes free for Joey Rittendale. The senior captain. Second year as captain as well. Out for Colas. Tips it through his legs. Bobby Ernsting right in stride. Left wing side in the RMU zone. Going around. Cachado driving. And he lifted the puck just high of the cage. Surprised the net stayed on its moorings there. I thought it it's this large. So. And it is a little yeah. bit. Malin wants a word. Yeah. And we finally get a whistle. 8-19. Left in the first period. I thought that that net had come yeah, off clean, but definitely. I think Malin yeah. noticed and said, might as well just blow the play down because if he doesn't get the official's attention, there could be a goal scored, and it may count depending on the official's review of it. And what about Bobby Ernstine just taking it uh, uh, past the, the boards and just all the way to the goal line? Great shot by him, just too high. And he beat Mike Cachado a forward for Armu, so sensing a mismatch there off that redirect from Colas in the neutral zone. Yeah, also Bobby was winning a penalty on that one, too. He thought he got tripped up after he took the shot. You looked toward the officials, but no call. I'm now looking forward, I mean, if the line I get down here, that could have been a potential penalty shot for uh, Bobby Ernsting, so a possible, possible missed call there. Oh, Pilka to the far side. Quinn, backhands one, almost into the crowd. Homerun was taken off the puck, but Quinn to it again. Homerun spinning one of the circles. Borowski. Tosses one on the near side where it's Turner. Red line, blue line, right wing side in the Illini zone. Sam Turner, nice elusive move. Players run around the boards. It is Homerun. Pushed off the puck there by Cachado. Far side option. It's a shot there, but blocked away by Opilka. Off the stick of Dahlberg. It is Cachado. Down low for Dahlberg. A pair of freshmen connecting on that latest chance for RMU. First year player in Drew Richter. Goes to the near side in the RMU zone for Holmgren. 7.34 left in the first period. No score between the Illini and the Eagles. Quinn with Wicklin out there too. A four-man dog pile, bottom of your screen. Holmgren desperately wanting the puck to just get moving, and McGovern's going to take it. Right across for Stover. Speedy play here from Dahlberg. Now for Cachado on his back. It's anyone out in front, but Lepic just redirected the puck wide. Inside positioning there from Brett Levick and a line eye killer. One goal versus Illinois already this season. A pair in last campaign. Nice pass off the skate of Wicklin. No icing there for Illinois as they exercise a quick change. Homer made it a very tough play for Levick right at the goal for that redirect. He tied up his stick in a legal fashion. But of course you have to imagine that Illinois is going to take a minor or two in this period alone, let alone the game too. Here's a pass in the middle. Masa couldn't handle it. Rizzo with a shot and a stand-up save. 1970s-esque from Jake Barnhart. He didn't flinch. Hit him right in the logo. 6.37 left in the first period. No rebound allowed. We've been seeing Illinois help out their goaltender so much. Speaking of, that was a chance for John Mosco. Had the puck on a stick. He's able to clear that. Uh, that's a difficult shot for Barnhart to stop right there. Come from that right point. Um, did a nice job. He's done, he's done all weekend, but shot maybe shouldn't have happened. And a shot there, Burback right circle, shoots one, blocked down by Graham, he'll have another try. And I don't think Barnhart ever saw that one as a redirected wide of the cage. 
Down low it is Burback. Spinning there along the near side corner. 6.20 left in the first period. Graham out to center ice. And across for James again, right circle. Has Stuve left side out in front in the sweeping effort there. Couldn't connect for Stuve as well as Mallon. Graham to the left side. McGing, chip play. It is Stuve for Graham, shooting through traffic, deflected down by an RMU skater. 5.57 left in the first period, but you could tell, Stephen, whenever uh, James McGing touches that puck, RMU watching his every move, this puck is cleared all the way down, stopping there, and chipped just wide. Balls be on the race for it against Rittendale, now it's Graham. The other way for Crookshank, laid on his shift, gains the red line, goes cross corner. Knocked down, and McGing will get to it along the near side. Smart play by Joey Rindo go all the way down, go another way. Otherwise, that could have been an easy shot for Mosby. Last luck down low for Caprio on the cycle. Left side, hash marks out in front. McGing on his back end, may go to the front, and a shot in the left pad save there. And Caprio, wide open, shoots just high. And met the end glass of 519 left in the first period. Two on two for the Eagles on the counter. Dan Doyle stopping up, shooting one wide. Nick Yanni will take it to the left point. Wicklin. Outlets one of the uh, neutral zone, rather. Moskluck with a nice steal, and we've seen that type of play from John Moskluck in that fourth line, line role. He has simplified his game entirely from a guy who maybe was thinking about scoring every game. How about just not being a minus every game and providing a solid uh, three-zone game for Illinois? 4.49 left in the first period, a whistle and an icing. Yeah, that containment by uh, Moskluck um, in neutral ice to get that puck away and then just get it back to the line eye. Uh, sure, it ends up now being off in the zone draw, but back then, 10 seconds ago, it was a good chance for Illinois to have a breakout. Novacell on the draw against Doyle. Right circle. Directly in front of Barnhart. Now it's Caprio behind for Wickland. Goes along the short glass on the Illini bench. Here is Colaz instead. He'll defer to Opilko on the red line. On his backhand, Colaz. Touches up for icing, 4.30 left in the first period. No score between the Illini and the Eagles. Kolas in that 50-50 puck battle, spinning away from a pair of oncoming attackers. Now it's counter. Again for Kolas. And number 19 once more has Ernsting back door and a shot of saving and a rebound try for counter, but he wasn't able to let go of the trigger. And Anderson lofts one to the neutral zone, but you said it in wow. the pregame show. Counter, Ernsting, and Kolas, they're the trio that's tough to defend the most. Yeah, that was a great chance on uh, Mallon by Kellner. Quinn to the near side. Now it's Rizzo for RMU. Nick Rizzo out to center ice. Cleared in by the Eagles. Jack Graham under some pressure. Takes down Martin. His stick was whacked out of his hands. And he goes palms up as if to say, I didn't do anything. Martin gets it. Escaping here is Anderson, left side wide open is Borowski, letting one go, and that was a weak shot. Wasn't even able to get to the net. Turner to the right side, Dylan Holt. Shoots one wide, and Barnhart smothers this one. 3.32 left in the first period. RMU not getting enough movement in front, and quite frankly, not tossing enough pucks to the front of the net if they're trying to get shots on goal. More importantly, second chance opportunities for Jake Barnhart. That's definitely a place Jack Graham can improve on next year. It's only his first year. He hasn't really been in uh, big-time situations all season, but just winning that battle in the corner and clearing that puck uh, had it taken away from him that last chance. Christian Semeta with you, Stephen Cohen alongside Eric Fisher down at ice level. Cachado on the tie-up. Dahlberg lost the puck. Holt gets it back and a shot off the outside of the post. Well, that's an example of a puck getting through traffic. And out of the near side, Chance Homer on his back end. Flips on for Drew Richter right in stride. Richter going wide on Borowski. May try a wraparound, but he's canceled out beautifully by Borowski. 3-13 left in the first period. I think Richter was vying for some interference. He's wide open here. But a quick steal there by the freshman in Dahlberg and a confident play from him. And he goes off the high glass and out to center. And Richter tried the same exact play last night. Uh, uh, almost worked last night. Didn't work tonight. Homer and regroups. Before he goes off for a change, Richter along the red line, blue line to the middle, dodges a hit, takes one, that's going to be a penalty, now Crookshank, tight angle, same in, and a rebound try just fluttered wide of the cage, 245, left in the first period, 244, Richter, his elusive speed, his evasiveness, going left to right, it's going to draw an infraction, 244 left in the first period, as I already mentioned, Illinois, their second power play of the night. Well, Richter and Kowaz, two first-year players, they're two of the fastest players on this Illini team. It's the only time they can get around that corner and get to net. It's a very good chance for Illinois. And uh, Richter had two chances on that last shift. 
Illinois scored on their first power play of the game last night, 33 seconds into it. And their first attempt tonight, a little bit more passive, not a lot of movement, especially in the high slots. But they win this draw, but Ernstein can't keep the puck along the blue line, despite his outstretched effort. Chastain, two minutes for hooking. Crookshank goes down as the line again in the line. Here's Opilga right circle, fakes a drive, and holds on to it for Bobby. Left circle, shadowing him is Burback. Right circle in front. Now it's McGing out back door, and that would have been an outstanding play. As we get another stoppage, 219. Left in the first period. I'm not sure what the whistle was for. Now let's see if the Illini try to get to John Moskowak earlier in this power play. That that created their first opportunity, their first time on the power play tonight. Let's see if it takes uh, less than a minute and a half this time around. Crookshank, Moskowak, and McGing up front on the back end. A fourth forward in Bobby Ernsting and Opilka, the quarterback. The power play for Illinois. When Tyler Opilka scores a point, just generates one point, a goal or an assist, Illinois is 19-2-1 on the season. So if number 22 gets on the score sheet, you bet he's going to put his team in the right spot. That's what great players do. Here is Crookshank along the end boards. Out of the near side, Ernsting. 106 left in the Illini power play. Quick feeds here from Opilka and Ernsting, but that trips up number 24. A nice recovery there from James King. Flips the puck and gets it right back, digging around Borowski. Near side, wanting to drive on his backhand, going around. A little luxury stroll. Borowski has lost his twig. And McGing again, a risky move, but it paid off. McGing, backdoor, Crookshank shoots up high and over the cage. Mallon is down. Where is it? On the backhand of Ernsting, he holds on. Tossing one in, Borowski with his lumber, slaps one against Bobby. Not out of the zone. Down to a half minute left in the Illini power play. Ernsting again, 110 left in the first. McGing, right circle. Tossing one for Crookshank, stop play, and he tried to fire one through the wickets of Mallon, but missed everything. Goes out to center, an extended shift for the Illini's first power play group, and it was a good one. But is anyone more exciting than James McGing when he's on the ice? He makes people stand up. 52 seconds left in the first period. Colas, now the captain. Rittendale shoots deflected. Great save, rebound, try, but Richter couldn't drive it home as the puck fluttered over his stick. 42 seconds to go, back to five on five. Rittendale with a drive, tipped just wide again. Oh, Drew Richter's going to be shaking his head at that one. Now it's a two-on-one for Robert Morris. Josh Hart, right side on Graham, crossing him over. Nice move, poke check there by Barnhart, and the net is dislodged. We will get a whistle. How's that for CSCHL action back and forth? But more importantly, before we get to the offensive side, Jack Graham yeah. again oh, keeping his man in front of him. Yeah, Jack Graham was not falling for any of the moves. He stayed back, and he, let Jay, he knew where Jake Barnard was. Knew, I think he knew his surroundings right there. He knew how close he was to the crease, and Jake Barnard finished the job. And when you keep your hands low like that, and you make sure that the puck doesn't get beat right through your legs and allow the guy's stick to get around you, that's basically all you can do because the puck is eventually just going to go into Jake. Here is McGovern to the far side. Turner with 20 seconds to go in the opening period. Counter. On the back of the cage, he is bumped off the puck there by Anderson, and a steal. Puck is shot wide. Here is Martin. Pass was almost intercepted by Richter, and it was. He will beat McGovern down the ice. No icing. Five seconds ago in the first period. We will send one to the near side. Two seconds and one. And that will do it for the first 20 minutes of hockey. Illinois took a 1-0 lead after 20. Last night, different story here. 0-0 after one period. Is that what you expected? Yeah, I expected a much more competitive game tonight. And I love what Illinois keeps doing to Jake Barnard after every single period. Going up to him, congratulating him. Another great period, keeping his team in the game. That's what you want to see from a, uh, from a team. We'll send it on an ice level. Eric Fisher is alongside with Grant Stubat. All right, Grant. Robert Morris came out a lot stronger tonight. We saw a lot, um, you saw him slow the pace of the game a lot more. Just what did you notice that first period and what needs to improve for you guys? Uh, we knew they were going to come out hard. Uh, we talked about that before the game. It was in the game notes. And uh, I think we just got to get back to how we played yesterday. Just get pucks deep, get on the body, and uh, take it to their deep. Got a couple good opportunities on that last power play, but couldn't get the puck in the back of the net. What happened there? What needs to, what needs to improve in that second period for the power play to get going? Uh, we had a couple good looks, but I think we needed to make more simple play. We forced a little bit out there, I thought, but uh, 
We'll get it. I think we get another couple of two power plays, and I think we'll get one. All right, thanks, Grant. Back to Dalen Brennan up in the treehouse. Thank, brothers reference. Thank you, Eric Fisher. Oh. Stephen Cohen alongside Cristiano Simonetto. No score between the Alina and the Eagles after 20 minutes. If there's a pick to click in that second period, Stephen Cohen, who's your guy? I didn't hear Neil Novosel's name at all in that first period. Let's go in the second. It's Neil Novosel. Neil Novosel, six goals on the season, six goals last year at Division II. We're going to get you the first period intermission. Just a couple of minutes. This has been the Alina Hockey First Period presented by WPGU 1071. WPGU 1071.
one chance to kill it dead But I will embrace it Into the darkness on the right To gamble is all Perfect new fight A hell of a A blueprint for life Blueprint your life
listening to Illini Hockey on WPGU. Now time for the intermission report. RMU really came out this game and I mean they just weren't looking to repeat yesterday's performance. Yesterday they just coming out flat not putting up a fight at all against this Illini team. But tonight they made a real effort to really slow the pace of the game down and that's what you saw in the first 10 minutes you saw several whistles about every 30 to 50 seconds. So, so RMU did a successful job in trying to slow the pace of the game for the Illini. That really gave them fits early on but halfway through the second period the Illini started to get going after a couple power plays and that one towards the end of the period, you saw Eric Crookshank have a couple of nice opportunities, but he just wasn't able to finish. Absolutely, I would agree with you 100% uh, there, uh, Eric. Uh, RMU came out, you know, with a ton of momentum on their backs. Uh, they they were pushing the play, uh, but it wasn't until they uh, started suffering um, some some penalties. Uh, and I believe it was only two this period, um, but it was just enough to slow them down and uh, allow the Illini to start coming back and uh, start up the charge and. What the Illini were able to do well um, was was capitalize on on takeovers. Uh, Robert Morris University, they were winning most of the faceoffs, um, so they were doing good in that aspect. However, the Illini were, were able to steal the puck um, and take it into their all in offensive zone and set up shop towards the second half of that period. I know you did mention that they were having trouble setting up uh, towards the beginning of, of play in that first period, but um, the Illini began to figure it out and they they're starting to hum. So it's looking good. All right, and going off of that, looking at the stats here, uh, the University of Illinois has 12 shots on goal, as the Eagles only have five, because that beginning of the first period there, they did not, Jake Barnhart didn't even see the puck for at least seven minutes or so into the first, especially the seniors, because it is senior night, so we'll give a shout out to the seniors in the next intermission. But they were hammering, especially people would get it to the seniors, get that in there. Okay, it's senior night, but we're trying to win. This, these, we're, we are the fifth team in the CSHL in the nation right now, and this is the sixth. So how they play today is really going to show what's going to happen in Ohio next week. So we really need to get our shots on goal up, yes, but doesn't matter who's going to score. It'd be nice for it to be a senior, but we just got to get on the board. We got to show them that we're here to play real hockey. Yeah, 12 shots on goal in the first period. That's a solid number going in. I mean, you're on pace to get about 36 shots on goal. So, I mean, any team's happy with that amount of shots. But um, in the first half of that first period, though, RMU was able to really uh, make sure Illinois didn't get any quality shots on goal. Illinois was able to probably control the pace, uh, control, control the puck and have possession of it, but Army was just really pressuring the line along the boards at the blue line, and that didn't allow them to get any, a really good look and, uh, until they got in the power play. And so Army coming back, though, they had about maybe one possess, one good shift where I feel, felt like they were able to really get a couple nice shots on goal, but for the most part, the line defense just uh, causing Army to turn the puck over in the neutral zone, and Illinois just being able to get to the puck quick. Uh, once, it, once it gets dumped down. Absolutely. Alana's defense has definitely been doing a phenomenal job. We saw it right there with uh, Mark Kandati after Jake Barnhart allowed a rebound just in the yeah, high slot big area. Play. Mark Kandati was able to pick up that puck and, and get it out of that area almost immediately. And, and we saw Tyler Apoka earlier in that first period just working the puck along the blue line. Yep. I mean, he is solid on that on, in that area. And he's able to see all corners of the ice look for the open man, get the pass, and, and receive the pass right just right back and, and keep the play going. So the defense for the Alana has have been phenomenal in that first period. And I think that it, it, you did mention that it is senior night. And yes, they have been trying to get the puck to seniors. And we saw James McGing. I mean, he was he was like... It, it Held was on his, the puck for a while on the one power play right there. Oh, yeah. It was his, <laughs> it was his playground out there. He was yeah. just having a ball. Um, but... While it is senior night, we have seen some moments with with the deep with other with the, not only one seniors but with the rest of the team um, being able to flash their skill set out there on the ice. So. Right, especially when you go to um, Jack Graham. Jack Graham has picked up that slack, even though our fifth best scorer is a defenseman, Joe Nolan. He is uh, he is currently out due to a concussion, but Jack Graham's really stepped up and taken on that role to show that we still have other guys and we're a deep team. Well. 
We have to cut it short for now, but thank you both very much for your insight. I'm Abby Kelsto alongside um, Eric and Mackenzie and Christiano and Steve will have the call in just a few moments. This has been your Illini Hockey Intermission Report for the University of Illinois Ice Arena. WPTU forecast brought to you by McDonald's. A chance of snow or freezing rain tonight. An overnight low will drop down to near 20. Cloudy skies, a 50-50 chance of snow on Sunday or high right around 25. Monday, lots of sunshine, but to upper 20s. Tuesday, partly sunny or high near 35. And then Wednesday, sunny skies are high on Wednesday, right around 45 degrees. I'm staff meteorologist Sally Russell on Champagne's Alternative. WPTQ 107.1. Everybody, we welcome you back into the big pond here for the start of the second period. Illinois facing off against Robert Morris. Number five, Illinois. Number six, RMU. A lot of CSCHL implications on the line. We'll talk about them in a couple seconds. Christian Simonetta, Stephen Cohen alongside Eric Fisher down at ice level. 
This could be a rematch come next week of a CSCHL play-in game that we saw between these same two teams last season when the tournament took place in Bensonville. Well, it could be the exact same situation. These two teams finished the regular season playing each other, and the very next weekend, they're playing on that Friday night in the CSCHL tournament. Now, if you're a diehard Illini fan, you remember how that game turned out. A 3-0 start for the Eagles. The Illini come all the way back. Looks like they're going to win the game. And the Blues, what was it, 4-3? 5-4. Oh, 5-4. My bad. Uh, it's One goal a, deficit. It's been a long left. time. <laughs> it's been an entire year. But a wild game. Illinois, if they get more points tonight than Iowa State, who's uh, playing Ohio, if they get, if they want to get more points than Iowa State, they will avoid the playing game and be the three seed playing Saturday. Face off right at the center ice dot. Controlled by RMU Borowski. Out of the far side, Illinois going from left to right in their primary home uniforms, the orange and gray sweaters, their second year. And against RMU going right to left in their maroon and gold colors. Cleared in along the far side corner, it's Counter. Counter, a junior, graduating from the program after this season. Ernstin goes down low, tipped there by Kolaz. Counter looking for Bobby out in the middle. He taps one free. But a pair of eagles around him. On the forecheck is Ernsting and Counter. Puck comes out to center where it's Burback. He lost it to David. And Gavin along that red line near side, 19-18 left in the second period. No score between the Illini and the Eagles. And it's Kolaz dipping one back for Caprio. There was, an over, there was a loose puck that Tower will put a good pinch down and try to get to it. But the Illini playing uh, somewhat conservative here tonight. Kolaz, one hand on his stick, defending well against Holt. Directly behind Chris Mallon and his goal. Four-man dog pile. Now it escapes free for Nick Yanni. Yanni, who scored last Saturday against Lindenwood. And now it's Quinn, left circle for Illinois. He shoots one left pad save and into the glove. There of Mallon. That's rebound control if I've ever seen it. Just kicking it into his own glove. 18-46. Left in the second period. No score between the Illini and the Eagles. Yeah, nice save by Mallon. And, uh, we, we've seen Cole Sumchak uh, before from Harvey Morris as well. But we've seen Mallon both nights this weekend. He's having a really great junior campaign. Face off to the right of Mallon. Left circle at the top of your screen. We thank you for tuning in on YouTube or WPG 1071 FM. Here's Richter. Left circle. He shoots one. Locked down. Mike Turk lets one go. Wide deflection off the knee of Homer and it would have counted. As of course you can direct the puck in with your legs, skate, or hand. As long as it's not a punching motion or a kicking motion. If it's just purely incidental contact, as I'm sure Stephen Quinn wants to chalk that up to that as he touches the puck off sides, it would have counted. 18-28 left in the second period, but that's how CSCHL hockey is. It's not going to be the fancy, flareful goals. It's going to be the sometimes. sometimes, but the greasy ones, the grimy ones that really decide games. And how about Mike Turk, who hasn't had that much playing time this year, but putting in a third defensive pairing now with Jono and out uh, this weekend. And a great pass to uh, Chance Homer on the right side of Mallon. Here is Nick Rizzo, who's taken a minor penalty. Puck right now on his stick. Nine out of the last 12 games. That's James McGing or Eric Crookshank in their earlier That's parts good. of their career. Ask, he didn't take one last night. It's been Dylan Holt taking a pair of minors for the Eagles throughout this weekend. Illinois 0 for 2 on the power play. And 0 for 6 on the weekend. And RMU, none. They've got no chances. Now he's a chance for Crookshank. Shoots and a great right blocker save there by Mallon as Anderson goes up. Really, Crookshank wants that 70th goal of his career. He'll get the puck back along the right circle. One-on-one -on -one there against Rizzo. He's checked to the glass. Now it's Rittendale right circle. The captain steps up and shoots just wide of the glove. Oh, Joey Rittendale may end up leading the team in goals after this weekend. Who knows with the hot stick that he has. Four goals in the past four games. All in consecutive games as well. Here is Sam Turner trying to catch Illinois off that rush. Sam Turner fakes right circle, shoots at a blocker save there by Barnhart, and a nice move to freeze up Graham, and he knew it. 17-21 left in the second period. A big stop for Jake as well as Chris Mallon at the other end. Yeah, a little hesitation right there by Robert Morris. Uh, got J Jack Graham kind of out position. A shot on Barnhart, but Graham recovered after the play on the deflection. Able to puck it, uh, stick it away and uh, avoid a second or third shot by the Eagles. Fourth line out for Illinois, as well as Robert Morris. Mike Cachado won it. Dahlberg directed one for Stover, who clears one in. 17-15 left in the second period. Kandati couldn't reach it to the far side, Cachado. The Chicago, Illinois native, the freshman, who's on a 16-game goal drought. 
Now it's Turk to the near side. Angling one across now are the Eagles to the far side. Kendati pushes against Lepic. As a member of the Illini has lost his stick, I believe. Or that was an RMU twig already picked up. Or no, that is an Illini's. That is Neil Novoselt's. But he's currently preoccupied, boarding a man up on the far side half wall. But this is a chance for RMU to shrink the ice here. Right circle, here's a shot from Dahlberg. That one's blocked away. And Kendati spinning one without looking down the ice. And it's going to go just wide of Malin for icing. But Novosel will be able to get his stick. 16-33 left in the second period. Novosel without his stick was the best defensive player right there for the Illini. Uh, staying, uh, kind of pinning him against the boards, but also blocking a shot uh, with his legs. So nice job of Neil Novosel staying engaged in the play without a stick. I think that's just a testament to Neil Novosel's game overall this season. Kind of, he describes it. He's ACHA play at its finest. It's just a grimy player that's going to find some disgusting ways to score. Here is Turek battling with Burback. On that far side, their battle results in another stoppage, similar to how the first period began. A lot of whistles, not a lot of fluidity from either team, but then, as the period progressed, so did the action as Illinois and Robert Morris exchanged a pair of chances down right to the final ticks of that first period. Hey, the seniors never want to get off these ice. They, uh, they love playing in the historic big bonds. And uh, more whistles, more time left here. Opilka to the middle. Here is the sophomore Bobby Earns. Think for counter and said, let's it go for Colas. He shoots and a great save there from Mallon. Right in the bread basket. He allows no rebound. 16-16 left in the second period. And this Illini second line, well, they're listed as the top line, but of course head coach Dick Cabrini likes to just dish out those terms because it seems like the top nine, any of those lines could be a number one. But Colas, Crookshank, or excuse me, not Crookshank, Ernsting and Counter have been that line to really run amok in the offensive zone because they're probably three of the fastest players that Illinois boasts up front. Yeah, they're all playmakers, but that last shot was a low slot redirect for Ernsting or Kellner, and it uh, Malin just missed up. Here's a steal right circle and a big hit there. Recovering was Opilka on Burback. And Caprio lays one head off the stanchion. Too far for Kellner. And Colas. Attempting to take Burback to the deck. He stays on his feet now. He shoots one deflected wide of the cage. Down to the near side. Nathan Chastain, 15-40 left in the second period. Rattles one in behind. It is Ernsting late on his shift. Goes up high off the glass. Nice pass for Kellner, but just out of his reach for Rizzo. Nick Rizzo chops one along that far side. Tipped out to center. Maybe a three on two for the Eagles. Going through the middle. Josh Hart, left wing side, left circle. Shoots one. Save my Jake. He holds on, and we get a pair of slashes from either team, nothing more resulting out of it. 15-20 left in the second period, but that just seems to be the opportunities that both these teams are getting. You have a wing option there, and the outside of the circle just let it go, but these two goalies have proved rebounds are their forte to keep in. And Caprio Pilka kind of clogged up the center of the ice, which forced Hart to the outside. A much more difficult shot on Barnard from that left. And especially when it's a three-on-two rush, it's the last thing Chico Adratus wants. But now a shot coming and a shoulder save. Bornhart didn't locate it off the initial shot as Yanni went up high to the far side. Slap shot was blocked there. As that was Scordillis letting one go. On the far side corner, Josh Hart maneuvering around. Barnhart turned the puck over. Yanni with a drive. And that missed the near side. 14.54 left in the second period. Rizzo okay, shoots one wide of the cage, and Doyle almost was hit with that one. A lot of shots on net in the recent few shifts. Here is Quinn along the far side half wall. Punches the puck ahead for Chance Homer. Nice inside out move. Over the red line, blue line down the middle, right wing side. He shoots, glove stop there from Mallon. And you can just copy and paste what's happened the past three minutes, and you won't miss a lot. 14-34 left in the second period. No score between the Illini and the Eagles. And we haven't seen a great A scoring chance in quite a while from either of these two teams. Well, that could have been our three on two by the Illini. Same exact play that Robert Morris just had, but Homer is forced to the outside. Bad shot on Mallon, and the offensive, offensive zone draw for the Illini. Crookshank on the tie-up. McGing brings it back to the captain. And that is another glove save. For Chris Mallon, Grant Stuve, right in the low slot along the hash marks. He wants that play one more time as his job was to deflect the puck and he couldn't get his stick on. Let's we'll see if that line I tried to get to Rittendale again. It worked in the first period. Had a nice chance on Mallon. And why wouldn't you want to give the puck to Joey Rittendale? As I already mentioned, four game goal scoring streak. The longest of his career. Heck, he had three goals last season. Two of those in overtime. 
Five game winning goals on the campaign. It is Stuve back to the line. Jack Graham left side, four goals on the year. Now for Stuve the senior. Far side half wall out in front. Blocked there by McGovern. Excavated by the Eagles. Alex Anderson going wide on Graham as Ryan Martin out of the middle. Anderson to the far side. Lucas Stover. Nice pass. McGovern's wide open. Left circle. Will he shoot? Goes inside for a pass. And there goes James again. One on two. Inside, outside. Splitting the defense. He will go Stover. And a nice play there. A chip the puck out of harm's way. Into the neutral zone as Illinois has to change. It's over here, a really nice job. He was pointing at McGovern to make sure they had that middle clogged up. And uh, that's a dangerous situation, McGing one on two. McGing forces a turnover. opilka has got the puck right circle, looking and a left skate save there by Martin, but he can't get the puck deep. It's Opilka right side. The captain on the left side, Joey Rittendale, moving to the middle. Opilka once more, floating one on. Oh, and that one just went wide. May have hit Novacell or Stover in front. Backdoor pass. Opilka settles it down. Novacell out in front. It also went through the skates of Moskov. Now Andrew Wicklin on the pinch. Nice move from him. And here comes the senior behind the cage. Has some options. Tries to stuff it home. That puck was directed wide. One of the best Illini offensive chances. And it came off of a play behind the RMU net. And James McGing stripped Borowski off the puck. 12.57 left in the second period. Another whistle. He knew that, you know who that came by? It came by the fourth line for most of it. So James McGing got started the fourth line. Had a few shots on Mallon. Not able to convert any of them, though, as this game stays tied at zero. Chris Jones-Simonetta with you. Stephen Cohen alongside Mackenzie Bach down at ice level. So we get a whistle and possibly a timeout from Robert Morris in the second period of a game closely decided. And it's this time it is off an ice. It's on an icing call. But Chico Adratis, I'll say the same thing I said last night. Ten years coaching, two-time ACHA Coach of the Year. He's got to be drawing up something. Yeah. And he out of that night. timeout, it worked. And it was sustained offensive pressure from Robert Morris. But they've let go of their only timeout of the game. Yeah, well, it, yeah, I would question it a lot more in a 0-0 game because I feel like right now, if you give up a goal off of the faceoff to the Illini, it's still only a one nothing game. But... If, it's, if you're down by one, maybe this is a situation. But tied at zero, it's a critical game for Robert Morris and their uh, national ranking still. And um, to kind of use that timeout and take this chance to talk to your team, kind of questionable. Face but I will question it. Oh, yeah, of no, course. No. I'm, I look. And here's Mackenzie Bach down a nice level. Yeah, it didn't look like Coach Chico Adranas was actually talking to the team much. It looked like he was, he was more so giving his boys a chance to take a rest, maybe. Um, that's just a guess. Long shot. But maybe giving them a breather. And I think so, off that icing, let's see if it pans out. Here's Wicken on the backhand. Moskalik was tied up on the end boards. It goes for Novacell. The sophomore out of Orland Park. Now for the Naperville native Moskalik. To the far side corner, Wicklin checks Lepic. Almost off the puck, and a steal there from Neal. As Moskalik out in front. John Moskalik out, and a backdoor pass right through the skates of Neil Novacell. Maybe one too many, despite how wide open Neal was. Oh, I thought that was all Neil Novacell in front of that. I don't like that pass to John Moskalik. And here is Cachado as Chico Adratis calls that timeout and is going to survive. As here is Holt to the near side. Nice move from Dahlberg, but was stripped of the puck. Mike Turek, junior defenseman out of Woodridge. Dumps the puck down for Dahlberg. The Illini engage in a shift change. Counter racing against Borowski. He taps one of the far side, kept in. Nice pass from Kolas. Ernsting, wide open, left early, shoots. Just high of the glove, as well as the blocker side. Up Mallon, and for a big goaltender like this, Stephen, you want to go high. That's how James McGing got the scoring started, and even Joey Rittendale's goal was high above the glove as Mallon went down. 11.47 left in the second period. And Mallon has proven he's going to suffocate Anthony. goes low to him tonight, so those redirects not going to come so easily. Counter plastered against the end boards by Borowski in a legal fashion. Lepic dumps the puck into the line. I bench will get a whistle and an offensive zone face off for Illinois. Eight minutes and 24 seconds into the second period. The scoreboard doesn't lie for tuning in on YouTube. No score between the Illini and the Eagles. And it's so important, especially out of that last timeout on the last faceoff, the Illinois won it because if Robert Morris had something set up to get right off the faceoff, it neutralizes it completely because Illinois is now in offense again. Homer and Quinn and number 10, Richter. But the Illini lost the draw, Burback. With Opilka, bottom of your screen, dumped in by the Illini. It is Chastine along the end boards. Homer and right on his back. Nathan Chastine out of Peoria, Illinois, leads this RMU club with 21 assists on the season. Here comes Rizzo, far side. The Illini's own right wing, right down. Oh, they go right there. It's
it's Nathan Chastain. Right on the money, his 10th goal of the season. He had 20 points in 20 games last year, and he's opened the scoring here off a pass that went through a mass of bodies. It's 1-0 RMU, 11-13 left in the second. Chastain was waiting there for about two, three seconds, just right there at the goal line, waiting for that pass, and uh, it paid off a beautiful shot from the goal line, and right past Jake Barnard. Not much you can do about that one, a great shot. Oh yeah, Jake Barnard just laid out to try there, and I asked you in the pregame show, the first goal being so important, now it's the visitors striking Illinois, having their backs against the wall, but still over halfway left in this hockey game, still some time. Well, what we saw from Mallon last night is Illinois' three goals came very spread apart from each other. He didn't let up another one or two right after one of those goals he stayed composed. How will Jake Barnard respond in front of a big crowd on senior night? Lucas Stover tips the puck now. Here's McGing with Hart. James again running into his own man, Stuve. The left-handed shot through the middle area. Now it's Crookshank right wing side. Eric Crookshank on Stover. He dumps one down for Stuve. Grant Stuve with some stick checks against him. Now for McGing. Nice pass. Eric Crookshank in the circles. His shot was blocked down by Yanni. And a two on two the other way for the Eagles. Dan Doyle left side gains a line. Plays it in for Hart. Nice pass. Maybe a two on one. The fan on the pass. 10.40 left in the second period. Backhand and one out in front. James DeGang, one on three. Getting some help here from Stuve and Crookshank, three on two. Crookshank left circle, put McGing out in front. McGing was taken down, and a glove stop there by Mallon. As McGing is slow to get up, 9.30 into the second period. one nothing Eagles, as they've scored that first goal of the game, thanks to the shot from Nathan Chastain that beat Barnhart blocker side. Well, Barnhart got, uh, he got past the first rush that Robert Morris had after a goal, so that's a nice response. Uh, but Illinois has to just find some sort of offense right now and get some shots. The fourth line was humming. Can this top line as well? Nova Cell against Chastain. Draw comes Rio. Pilka shoots. That was blocked down. He'll get a second try and throws it. Where's the puck? It's right in between Mallon's legs, and he covers 10-24. Left in the second period. If you're Edgar Ciccarini, that's how you want a response from your team. Again, any shot is a good shot, especially with some traffic, and you've got puck hunters like Kolaz and Counter right around the goal mount. We got Kolaz on top of Mallon on that one. A very tough save. Nice glove save. Off the draw. Ernsting tied a man up, but it's Burback. One on two against the Alina defense. It is Opilka for Ernsting. Saucers one in, and a hit there from Richter. I think he's going to get called for it. Out in front! Or no, it was a delayed offsides, rather. And tagging up where the Illini, and it's Opilka. I thought there was going to be some incidental contact here as Opilka whiffs on a clearing attempt. 9.57 left in the second period. It is Borowski missing that puck, so it'll be an icing here. Called on Illinois after that stretch pass for number 22, 9.52. Left in the second period, still 1-0 Eagles. And I think this is a huge face-off because uh, you, Robert Morris hasn't tried that many times this week in a set play off the draw uh, because Illinois won so many face-offs this weekend. But one pass gets shot on Barnhart. That can make this a 2-0 game in the blink of an eye. Martin on the draw against Ernstein. And the sophomore won it against the junior. Here is Bobby to the near side. Nice flip out. It's Cole Oz, bottom of your screen. Neutral zone now into the offensive zone for Illinois. Going wide on a pair of Eagles. Anderson trying to hit him. He can't do so, but the puck eventually generates onto the stick of Rizzo with 9.33 left in the second period. Going down low, it's Kandati. Spinning one down to the left side where Rizzo will be on pinch. To the near side half wall. Martin and Anderson interchange. Alex Anderson may try a wraparound. Instead, keeps floating above the high slot. Drops one for Martin. Out of the right side. Shot blocked there by Kellner. Scordillis, can he keep it in? He does. And rifles it through a pair of Illini defenders. And now it's 9.06 left in the second period. And Illinois still trying to get the puck out. It is Caprio up for Kellner. Look out for Scordillis and a nice shoulder hit from him. Almost bumped Kellner into an early line change. I think Illinois needs to throw a few more chucks. Physicality yeah. has been a little one-sided as this is tipped yeah. in. Icing here at 11-11 in the second period. Make a wish. The reason Illinois, oh, I got a lot of wishes, but uh, the reason Illinois was able to uh, be pretty dominant last night is they were keeping the Eagles tired and somewhat exhausted while on the ice. Tonight, Illinois is not playing that physical, wants to see more checks, wants to see more extended zone time. Uh, make Robert Morris work if they're going to take a 2 nothing lead. And what other line to put out to exemplify that than the fourth line? Novacell, Wickland, as well as Mossuk. Now here's Graham winding, firing. That shot was blocked away. Well, the far side corner, but Graham gets his own rebound out in front. Mossuk spinning, shot save made there. 
by Malin as he went low. Nice hit there by Wicklin. For the near side, it's Anderson. Rotating it in for Rizzo. He'll skate free and clear the puck down. This one's going to be icing unless it goes off of Barnhart, which it did. The accuracy there and a risky play from Rizzo, but it paid off. 8.20 left in the second period. Cleared in by Illinois. Stover lost an edge, gets up to his feet. Wicklin's right there pushing him in the outside of the cage. Will the net stay on? We'll find out. And another steal from John Mosley. On the backhand, spun one wide. He'll have a second whack at it. And keep moving around Scored Illis. He's posted up into the glass. Now it is the defenseman in Graham. Smitty went out in front. Great right pad save. Oh, my goodness. Andrew Wicklin. Highway robbery from Mallon. We go the other way. Right circle. Here is Lepic. An unbelievable feed from John Moskaluk. And all it seemed that Andrew Wicklin had to do was lift it. But the right leg flashing out there from Mallon. Now it's Moskaluk again. Wicklin pressure it. Here is Richter to the far side. Wiggly pressuring the eagle behind the net. Made that a feasible play for Illinois. John Mosco, great pass to Andrew. Cachado turned the puck over. It's Richter on the right circle. Moving in. Shooting deflected. Where is it? Oh, Quinn with a chance. But now it is Stover. And he's pressured by Quinn, so he gives it up quickly to Dahlberg, who sends one down. Illinois with some jump. 7.15 left in the second period. This crowd here at the Big Bond is ready to jump at any time as well. That's what you want to see. You want to see shots. One of them's going to go through. You hope so, but Chris Mallon, allowing under two goals a game. Line got three on him. As Holmeren lost an edge. It is McGovern. Connor McGovern skating through the neutral zone, hitting Burback. Maybe have handcuffed him a bit. He launches the puck back into the Illini zone, baking the puck off the boards was Kandati. Turek, and out of the near side in the Illini zone. They have some trouble. It's Richter. You hear the Illini bench yell wheels. He's going to do exactly that. Dump the puck in. Go off the ice. Malin sets the puck up. Crookshank first on the forecheck. Now Quinnell on the near side against Borowski. Quinn lost it there. Chastain, the goal scorer on the red line. Blue line, left wing side in the Illini. Zone McGing on him. Pressured him. Now Quinn sees Crookshank up ahead. He had about three eagles in front of him before he even attempted to pass that one off. And Quinn with a nice cancel out right along that Robert Morris bench. Here come the Illini, possibly on a three-on-one. But now it's a three-on-two as Robert Morris kept the puck. And a great back checking there yeah. from James again to lift the stick of number nine Malsey with 6.03 left to go in the second. And yeah, the middle ice just poked that puck away. Could have been a nice shot in the low slot for Robert Morris. Malsby, great feed to the right side on this wide ice service. Deking out in front. That's going to be a tripping penalty as Dylan Holt with an individual move that fooled Grant Stuve. He goes to the sin bin. The first power play of the game for Robert Morris. First power play of the weekend. 5.53 left in the second. Now let's see what Illinois does now. How do they respond after the first, in the first PK? We go, what does Jake Barnes do? That was, that was pretty low. Oh, wow, we get a uh, Mike's on down there. We hear uh, every single slam of the, the new sin bin. Hey, Mackenzie Box got to watch that green light too. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I had to watch all the figures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you never know. The family-friendly broadcast on Senior Night. We're glad yeah. you can join us. Christian Semenis, Stephen Cohen alongside Mackenzie Bach. Got a nice level. one nothing. Robert Morris, they look to add to it. Their power play, 18.5%. Illinois' PK, 87%. That shot goes through wide. It is Martin to the far side half wall, and he waits and holds. Down low is Anderson. Look at this setup. He loves to go in Gretzky's office with that pass. He's knocked away. No Pilka sends one down. Malin will choose to play it. First pass on uh, Ron Morris' attack was supposed to go back to Holt, but he fell down at the blue line, and uh, the Eagles had to adjust. Here come the Eagles once again on the dump-in attempt. Stopped there by Barnhart. Slapped away by Caprio. Pilka does the exact same thing. Now for Counter, who wires one down the ice. No shots on goal for Robert Morris so far. 44 seconds into this opening power play. Yeah, that's a good PK. Illinois winning so far on this uh, special teams. To the middle here, it's Chastine flipping one. Glove down by the captain, Rittendale. Burback gets it down low for Chastine on the goal line. Took a tumble. Gets back up. Forehand to backhand move. 60 seconds left in the RMU power play. Borowski, right circle. Chastine, great pass. Here's Dando. Fires one that was blocked down. Where is it? Right along the goal line out in front, but Mosby, Mosby rather, was stick checked by the Illini. They may have a rush two on two, maybe three on two. Rittenell joining the play. And now Homerin almost had the puck sticked away. He's got to get it deep. Here is Homerin. He'll play four corners with it. Goes back to Graham. 
as well as Barnard, which is a smart play with 35 seconds left in the power play. Illinois gets it back to center. I don't think that Chance Owen realized that line I had the advantage at the left point. Or that yeah. they didn't have guys yeah. back. Yeah, he had no idea that uh, that was a chance for Illinois maybe to get a shot or two. Um, and so uh, that, that non-recognition um, took away Illinois' opportunity. 421 left in the second period. 29 seconds left in Grant Stubay's minor for tripping. As we get a face-off here at neutral ice. Brooke Shank will come on the draw against Yanni. With Hart on his left side. And Doyle, that right defender. So he's a forward like the Illini's power play. Four forwards have become very dangerous depending on how far number 23 is willing to pinch. Trying to keep the puck in. He leads the rush, gets checked off the puck. Wigging is also canceled out by Yanni, but the puck comes back. No one clears it. And just out of the reach of Crookshank, or else he would add a one-on-one -on -one against McGovern with 14 seconds left in the Illini PK. Four minutes left in the second period. Here's a rush for RMU. McGovern, left side, skate the stick. It's Doyle. Tight angle chance. Out in front, but here comes James again to the far side. Back to even strength. Nice pass laid to the left side where it's McGovern. Stube comes out of the box. On the end boards here. To the right point it goes. Nick Rizzo to the far side. He whiffed on it. Now it's again. Yanni down low. Look for the stuff play. A nice backhand pass through the middle. McGovern spinning great glove save there by Barnhart. Desperation as he already committed to the shot in the low slot. 331 left in the second period. A huge save from Jake, and we're back to five on five. Jake Barnhart, I don't know how he found that one with his glove, but somehow did. It was a line drive coming at him, but Jack Graham, Joey Randell playing exceptional right now in front of him, especially Jack Graham. I think best game of this season. 16-29 into the second period. Nathan Chastain's 10th goal of the season, the only one we have so far. It's his third point against Illinois in three-plus games. Here is Floro. All along the left side. Cachado at the high circle. Instead, it goes back to the point. Rizzo throws one on. Glove down by Neal. And a shot stump attempt there from Dahlberg. Ends up off the back of the cage and into the netting. Jake Barnhart having to move a lot. Left to right, left to right. You only have to wonder how much his versatility in the crease will challenge his ability to stay set. And the whistle's starting to come again. When there were those prolonged sequences without whistles, without stoppages in play, Illinois was doing a lot better. They're getting chances on Mellon, but now whistles, and they're in the defensive zone. Big face-off win, though, by Nova Cell. It's Opilka. Well, on that near side corner against Flora, Opilka goes along the left point. Rizzo's the only man there. Nick Rizzo down low for Floro. His first shift of the weekend goes up high from Wicklin. This will not be icing as Moskluck attempts to chase after Rizzo with under three minutes to go in the second period. He'll look to reset. Illinois' four checkers remain along the half walls, and they back up as Rizzo wants to move through. He'll go dumping it in. It is Caprio. John Moskluck took a hit at, the blue, hit at the blue line, so Robert Moore's really throwing their bodies around right now. Moskluck left it for Novacell. Here comes Caprio. It's an out in front. Great save and a rebound. Try from Wicklin. Andrew Wicklin has had three shots on goal in this second period, but out of the air. An incredible chance from him. The line at fourth line still working on it. Here is Anderson through the legs of counter. And again, or rather McGing. It squirts out to center ice, but Andrew Wicklin, a guy who is a 13th forward on this roster, but he's playing like the top line guys. Here's Anderson, left circle, tossing one to the middle. Rittendale, he's checked out the puck. Borowski winds and fires. Great block from Capri. It was a dangerous one because he was skate. taking away the eye line of Jake Barnhart 100%. Yeah, that was a that was a tough play, but uh, Joe Gaprio, no one has more blocks on his team. And a penalty coming up to RMU after the play as the puck. Gone into the neutral ice. Crookshank was on the ice when the officials made that call. As we shifted our attention to the neutral zone, 152 left in the second period. The Illini will go to a power play. Yeah, I think this is what Illinois is going to start to uh, get a nice little sequence, some nice cycling going on. Uh, a little stoppage right now as the refs talk it over. And it's going to be a well-rusted top power play line for the Illini. And Dylan Holt has taken three minors already on the weekend. And tonight it was an offensive zone, neutral zone. Last night it was just a dumb penalty in neutral ice. So he's not taking smart uh, fouls this weekend. And uh, it's come, it might come back to hurt his team both nights. The Illini 0 for 2 on the power play so far tonight. They scored two power play goals on Friday. 
Look for John Moskuk on this one, Stephen, to park. His skates directly outside the blue paint for a deflection. Face off one by Illinois, it's McGing. He'll protect along the far side half all go back across for Ernsting. Bobby Ernsting for Old Pilka straightaway. Crookshank, right circle. He's pressured. Chips a puck to himself, taking some wax, spinning one out in front. And Masa was the only guy there, and it's cleared away by RMU. Crookshank with a late hit on Burback, no call. 90 seconds left in the second period, 138 left of power play time. Yeah, that, that took a long time to set up, and then not very good shot with Moscow uh, covered uh, heavily by Scordillas. Here is Crookshank. Going down low, banks the puck to the near side, bottom of your screen, James McGain. Now for Ernsting. Escapes free for Crookshank. Nice pass in front, and that actually hit off the right pad of Mallon. With Moskuk right in his kitchen. Here's a pass from McGain to Ernsting. Bobby goes down low for Moskuk. He fumbles with it, 60 seconds left in the second period. Big hit there by McGovern. Moskuk keeps the play going. McGain out in front, bounces over hard stick, but he regains and clears it down. No shots except for, if you want to call Crookshank's drive, a shot on goal. None other than that being directed towards the front of the net. Yeah, a lot of stagnant play by that line in this power play. Not much cycling. Everything's next to the boards. Well, here is Tyler Opilka. Now for Grant Stube. Has Cole Oswald on the near side. Said he's boarded there by Rizzo. Here is Colas. Nice pass there for Stube. Great feed to the top of the point. Here is Rittendale now for Richter. Down low for Colas. 23 seconds left in the period. And that pass from Colas was read beautifully by number 21, Nick Yanni, and forces Rittendale to go back out into his own zone with 15 seconds left in the second. Yeah, that one uh, shot actually on goal. There's one that hit Mallon's right uh, pad. Other than that. Last second chance. Here comes David Kellner with five seconds. He sends one on, tipped it a great save over the cage. Now back out, and that will do it. For two periods of play after 40 minutes, Illinois down one goal, makes a Nathan Chastain strike in the second period. The Illini will have eight seconds of power play time ticking over into the third period, but a great response from an RMU team who hadn't scored all weekend long, hadn't even led exactly because they hadn't scored. Now they have the lead over the next 20 minutes of regulation. What do you hope to see from them? Yeah, it took a set play, and uh, it just worked out, worked out as a... Uh, Jay, they got one past Jake Barnard finally. And that will do it for 40 minutes. Illinois down 1-0. We'll get you the second period intermission in just a couple of minutes. This has been the Illini Hockey second period presented by WPGU 1071. Let's get back to music. Champagne's
Listening to Illini Hockey on WPGU. Now time for the intermission report. Reporting live from the University of Illinois Ice Arena for the second period intermission, I'm Abby Kelso alongside Mackenzie Bach and Eric Fisher, and you're listening to Illini Hockey on WPGU 107.1 and YouTube Live. Well, tonight it's senior night. We are down 0 1 to the Robert Morris University, but now that we're still hopeful, we're hopeful that we're going to get a, a W for our seniors in their last home game. So who has been a really standout player, not only this season, but overall in their career here as an Illini? Um, we'll start with you, Mackenzie. Oh, that's a big question. Whew, lo very loaded. Um, honestly, the biggest player, are you asking senior-wise? Senior-wise, yes. Senior-wise. Um, the go-to answer would be James McGinn, of course. Um, however, I, honestly, I would say probably David Kellner. I mean, he's been a, a workhorse out there. Um, I 
saw it last night. I know you guys weren't uh, able to attend. Um, but the, the kid is, I mean, he worked his way up from, from the bottom to the top. He's on the first line for a reason now. Um, his hustle out there is is tremendous, and it, it truly makes a difference. Yeah, I'm going to go with Eric Kirkchenk, though. The guy's put up some huge numbers in his career at Illinois. 69 career goals. I mean, that just speaks for himself for what he's been able to accomplish these last four years. The guy is a monster on both ends, and that's what's so special is while he puts up the offensive numbers, he could do it on the defensive end as well, showing what a great two-way player he is. And without him, Illinois' success these last four years would, would not have been the same. Right on McKenzie, you started to mention James McGing. That's not home in a highlight, but I want to highlight that. Hopefully tonight, James McGing can get his 50th career goal. He is at 49 City at 98 assists, and I hope he can get that up to 150 goals. So shout out to James McGing. Hope that you can get that. But I want to focus on a close friend of mine and incredibly influential leader on this team. Uh, Joey Caprio. Joey Caprio brings everything on and off the ice to this team. He comes out as an influential senior leader. Um, he always boosts morale. He's always He comes out and gives his, his all in every single game. I know Illinois State was an easier competitor this year, but still, I know that was a game that I went on the road for and saw Joey even then when it was supposed to be an easy game. He put his body into everything. That guy throws his body defensively into every single shot that comes in front of either David Heflin or Jake Barnhart recently. He also is one that really tries to score, so he really tries to get in there not only defensively, but give back offensively. So I really think that Bila and I are going to miss uh, senior Joey Caprio. Yeah, and just, just his locker room presence as well. He's just one of the more lighthearted guys on the team, always able to really brighten the mood up for him and for himself and his teammates. And that's something, that's just a little thing that a guy does and that a lot of guys really appreciate someone on that team that could do that. But when he needs to get serious and when the team really needs him to step up and be a leader, everyone knows that he can do that. So just a great guy in general. All right, going off of that, Ken is saying on the defensive track, uh, a little bit about David Heflin. David Heflin is injured tonight, and Jake Barnhart stepped up to fill that gap. But when Joe Olin, our number one starting goalie last year, he was out for a little while. David Heflin really was that guy that filled in, stepped up, and got us going last year. And so we're going to miss him a little as well. Also. Yeah, I mean, he really put his name on the map, too, when last year Illinois went down to Iowa State. And this guy made 72 saves on 73 shots on that weekend. And that was just a hell of a performance by him. And it really just is sort of him is that that number two goalie on the team and really showed that the, the goalie position this season was going to be all his and he's proven that so far this season he'll get back healthy and he'll come back for postseason even stronger and ready to lead this team. Absolutely and coming off of um, preceding Joe Olin is definitely not an easy task. He was a phenomenal goaltender during his tenure at, at Illinois. Um, but Heflin, you know, he, he took the uh, took the role and um, he made it his own, and he's he's done a phenomenal job when he's been healthy. Um, unfortunately, like uh, Abby, you said, um, he is injured currently, um, and, and until the postseason happens, he will still be out. Um, but. Here we go again, the backup goaltender stepping into uh, those boots and filling those shoes. Um, Jake Barnard doing a phenomenal job through his seven games so far and now currently through his eighth, eighth, his eighth game, um, only allowing one goal so far through two. So um, our goaltending has been phenomenal. And um, senior night, this, this may be uh, one of the last times that uh, the Illini fans will see David Heflin at home. Maybe he may not be playing, but this will be his last time at the Big Pond. Um, but, Goaltending has not been a problem for the Illini, unfortunately. Yeah, and head coach Nick Green mentioned it pre uh, when they were do, uh, uh, doing the ceremony for the seniors that David Hef David Heflin's the only goaltender in Illinois history to have a letter on his chest. So that just speaks to the leader that he is on and off the ice. And that, that's something you usually don't see out of a goaltender because they're not really in the action as much on both ends of the ice. Ends of, ends of the ice. But he just makes his presence known always in that locker room for the, the Illini. It's been huge so far this season. Another senior with a letter on his chest, Joey Rittendale. As captain, we're going to miss him a, a crazy amount. His What I've loved this year is him being paired with another Joe, another Joe Joe Nolan to be exact, and how Joe Nolan's really picked up that that um, excitement, that working with Joey Rittendale, but also showing that he's a leader as well. That's somebody that's going to step up when we do lose this great class of seniors, and you'll see kind of fill in that gap. But also, Joey Rittendale, 12 goals, 35 assists, 7 goals this season. The, the most in all three of his seasons combined. Uh, Four-game scoring streak. This guy's on fire. I'm really hoping he can get that goal going into the third, get that W for the Illini tonight. Yeah, and I think um, Joe Nolan's kind of sparked a little something in Joey Rittendale, just showing that he could 
what he could do more offensively to really help out the team. And uh, Fabrini also mentioned this in the pregame ceremony for the seniors, that Rittendale said that uh, watch out for his offensive numbers this season. And that was kind of taken as a joke. But, I mean, Joey, Ritt Joey Rittendale was just really showing that when his team needs him, he could really score the puck. And this, these last three or so weeks, he's been really clutch down the stretch, getting these game-winning goals or, the, or these goals that are sending games into overtime. And that's why he wears a C on his chest, because he not only leads, but what, uh, uh, off the ice, but on the ice, he takes over when he needs to. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it seems like we're, we're trying to hit on all the seniors here tonight. <laughs> um, so why not mention Grant Stuve and Andrew Wicklund? Yep. Um, Wicklund's been doing a phenomenal job throughout these two, first two periods so far. Um, Three shots on goal. I believe two of them were, were great A opportunities, am I right? Um, Probably phenomenal have been goals. Job. You're right. Almost. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Could have been game changers. Very close. Um, and then we've got Grant Stuve. Now, <laughs> of course, Grant Stuve took that took that penalty. Um, now, a very debatable penalty, might I say, um, in the second period. Um, but he, as well, has been a phenomenal leader um, and veteran on this ice. And he will be truly missed after this season. And to finish up senior night, someone near and dear to our heart. want to give a shout out to our lead broadcaster, play by play, Cristiano Seminetta. This Ooh. is Cristiano's last home game um, ever, and he's been here for four years, absolutely transformed our program, got us video this year, he raised the three of us up as wonderful broadcasters that will continue to go on with our career, we but like <laughs> huge shout out to our mentor and friend, Cristiano Simonetta. The program will miss you, and I know we will too. Absolutely. Cristiano, you're the man. But thank you guys both very much for your insight. I'm Abby Kelso along, along with Mackenzie and Eric. Cristiano and Steven will have the call in just a few moments. This has been your Line A Hockey Intermission Report from the University of Illinois. Twitter.com slash WPGU1071.
listening to Illini Hockey on WPGU 1071. And now time for the third period. Hi, everybody. We welcome you back into the big pond here in Champaign, Illinois. The start of the third period. Just a couple seconds away. Illinois down one nothing to the Robert Morris University Eagles with eight seconds of power play time left on Dylan Holtz minor. Christian Simonetta, Stephen Cohn, Eric Fisher down at ice level. So, Stephen, Illinois has to get this game to overtime, and can you tell the fans why? Ohio Bobcats currently up 5-1 to one late in the game against the Iowa State Cyclones. Illinois needs to walk away tonight with more points than Iowa State. Basically a one-game showdown between the two teams. Whoever gets the more points, they get to play in the playing game on Friday. The other team, they enter the semifinals of the CSCL Tool Tournament. If Illinois gets one point, if one goal ties up, sends it to overtime, they're not. They're gonna gonna get one less game, and that's good if they want to win the CSCHL tournament for the first time since 2013. And the reason why Illinois has to outscore Iowa State is because they both have 22 divisional points, and the tiebreaker goes to Iowa State because of the season series. They won the goal differential, and Iowa State is a team who beat Illinois twice in this very building. Wins that came back in November, but we still thought that they were going to affect the season standings, and look what happened. And that's so weird because Illinois is a team that rarely gets swept at home. It happened against the Jamestown Jimmies last month as well. Uh, so Illinois, they slipped up a few time, a few weekends this year, but if they can have a big third period tonight, all of that's forgotten. Illinois will move into the top four, most likely in the national rankings, and they'll be in the top three in the CSCHL playoffs. And you could bet head coach Nick Brady is telling his team, look, all we have to do is force overtime, and barring a four-goal comeback from Iowa State, you're headed to the semifinals. So this is uh, basically your last full period here at the Big Pond. How about you tell me, who's going to score here in this third period? Got to go play. with my man Bobby Ernsting. He's been on fire the entire weekend. Look for number 24 to strike and get his team leading. 13th goal of the season. He wins a faceoff right in front of us to start this third period. Joey Caprio, his last period in this building as well. Across for Tyler Opilka. Now up for David Counter. Back to even strength here, five on five, as Illinois only had eight seconds left of power play time. But here is Colas along the far side half wall. Rizzo on him. Colas, nice play on the blue line, but a smart one, too, to dip back out to neutral zone instead of trying to keep the puck. Or else that probably would have been a breakaway chance or an odd man rush for Robert Morris. Yeah, Illinois still has to play conservative. Only a one-goal game. You're going to get your chances. You had them in the second period on Mallon as well. Nathan Chastine, the goal scorer. It was his 10th goal of the season. Came in the second period. Now for Coldy Malsby. The backhander went wide. On the near side, it's Cole last tipping one ahead for David Counter. On his horse here, trying to get to the puck around Borowski. It's too far in front of him. 50 seconds into the third period. And RMU to hold. Chastine. Surveying his options, waiting for his teammates to change up front as Joshua Hart steps over as he scored in the Friday game in the January series that really put the game away for RMU. It was a shorthanded goal in the third period, so watch out for number 24 as he has the puck right now. Sending a man in, it is Doyle. Bad angle and a glove stop there by Barnhart, who shut that tight angle away. 117 into the third period, Illinois down by one goal. If you're Nick Fabri, you don't want to see Jake Barnard trying to take any chances right now because uh, any any kind of mistake could easily make a second goal for Robert Morris put this game out of reach because Illinois' goals might be hard to come by tonight. Chris Mallon playing excellent in that for the Eagles. You have to think if RMU scores this next goal, it is going to be a backbreaker for Illinois and their confidence will have to be tested as well. Here is Mike Turek on the near side. Glove down by Richter to the neutral zone, Connor McGovern. Knocked down by Homer. Nice pass for Richter. Right circle. His toe drag effort was stifled away. Dan Doyle for Hart. Right on the tape of number 21, Yanni. Gains the line right side. Shoots one pad save there by Barnhart. A bit of a misfire on that rebound attempt. But 18-19 left in the third period. Jake stands tall and Yanni tossing pucks to the net because it's just going to kill off time. Yeah, Illinois is going to have to get some sustained pressure on Robert Morris. It's already been two minutes in this, in this final period, and uh, nothing brewing for the line not yet. Face off to the left of Barnhart. Watch for Alex Anderson off this tie-up. Instead, it's Martin. Threw a man off the draw. Stuve collects the puck. James McGing may be a three-on-two for Illinois. His pass was knocked down by Scordillis. Nice move by McGing around Anderson. He goes down to one knee and comes back up to two skates. Graham shoots only for deflection. Glove by Mallon. As that attempt from Stuve would have been over the crossbar, bar rather, and D 
deemed illegal, 18.03 left in the third period. Yeah, I, I, I want Stuve more set in that position. I don't think uh, Jack Graham knew that uh, Stuve wasn't base, wasn't ready yet for that shot, and uh, could have been a nice uh, redeflection shot. Here is McGain back to a great play. It's written in a shot of St. May there, a set play off the faceoff, and Malin does exactly what he has the entire weekend, keeping RMU in games. Yeah, Bobby Ernst, another nice shot on that. Here is McGang, one on two. McGang, nice move through his legs, but Scordillis read that play. To the left side it goes for Rittendale. Or rather, Stuve, down low. Chop pass out in front, and a save made there by Mallon. As Crookshank inadvertently whacked him after the whistle, he gives him a pat on the chest. Camaraderie, 17-35. Left in the third period, the play, though. It's going to be evened out in that RMU side after RMU was able to put the pressure on in that second period towards Illinois' end. Yeah, but Mallon just a vacuum right now. He's not allowing any rebound opportunities, and uh, that's not good for the Illini. Illini won the draw, but Dahlberg won the loss. Goes cross corner. Here is Kandati. Got to get the puck in deep. If you're RMU, to the neutral zone. It is the speedy Andrew Wicklund. Fires one left pad save there. A team leading four shots for Andrew Wicklund. Now behind the net for John Moskowick. And why wouldn't you have confidence putting this fourth line out that has generated two of the top scoring chances in the hockey game? And uh, I didn't think uh, Andrew Wicklund had the most shots of any line on senior night. And he's got the puck now looking in front for Moscow, but that was just behind him. Andrew Wicklund knows that this is probably one of his last games at least. Playing in an Illini sweater as he is a senior. Not wasting any opportunity. It's Lepic. Chip play up ahead for Cachado, right on goal. And Barnhart will eat it. 16.51 left in the third period. Illinois' power play not been able to generate much. 0 for 3 on the night. But Robert Moore still cannot take any minors. They have to play a clean, disciplined game, and Chico Adratis acknowledges that. Yeah, and, and Robert Morris just keeps throwing guys the net, uh, which is a great strategy against Jake Barnard because it's going to force him to stop all the pucks, and you have all these offensive zone drugs. Chastine on the draw. Lost it, but Burback recovers the puck from Caprio. The senior defenseman lays one up on a head for Colas. Goes down to one knee. And counter fighting for it. 16.35 left in the third period. Opelka gets a puck on the far side half wall. Spinning one in through traffic. That went through McGovern and Ernsting as well. Cleared away. Here is Colas on the near side half wall. Banked in around for Opilka. Far side chip play over the stick of a Robert Morris University Eagle. And this will be icing. As Stover couldn't handle it. 16-18. Left in the third period. Head coach Jake Verini wants a word because it looked like Stover could have played that puck as it went right over his blade. Nonetheless, a whistle, 342 in. And, and this is, I think, the slowest period we've seen so far tonight. And a lot of whistles, no, no penalties yet, but uh, Illinois just has to find ways to stop the stops. And RMU has to find a way to get a second goal past Jake Barnard. Here is Ernst saying now for Thomas Cole has four on three for Illinois. Left circle, no stick for the defender. And the shot came to the right side where it's Homerun. Down low. Pass back door. Great play there from Ernsting, or rather Colas, but he couldn't direct the puck towards the front of the net. He is sitting down on the end boards, pondering that missed chance. Four minutes into the third period, still 1-0 RMU. Illinois had a lot of really good chances at the net tonight. The staff been able to convert any of them. They've been coming from the bottom six for the most part. This time, though, Thomas Colas. Homer and Richter and Quinn, Kendati and Turek on the back end. Homer on the tie-up, left skate maneuver there from Doyle. And the puck comes free for Yaniel on that near side. He dropped one for Scordillis. Chris Scordillis, the junior defenseman. No goals in his last 14. Here's Homer in tight angle, trying to stop and start. It was poked away. The left side, Kendati on the pinch. Does his job. Now down low for Quinn. He gets taken down, and that is the fifth minor penalty drawn by Stephen Quinn in the past three games. Illinois to a power play. 15-39 left in the third period. What else can you say about Stephen Quinn? He's been playing this lineup lately, and he is doing a wonderful job. All those drawn penalties, but also just the way he's uh, kind of contributing to the offense. I was at the gym with him at 9 a.m. today. He was just working out, getting a little game day workout. He's putting in the work, and he's being rewarded with all his playing time. Great play. Did Stephen Cohn just say he was in the gym? Yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. You'll have to go to the power play. <laughs> 
Here is Dylan Odell on the far side corner. Here come the Illini, but Holt whacking away and not wanting to give up that puck. Here's Chastine, goes off the back of a man, but it's kept in inadvertently. Ernsting, nice play for Opilka, but Chastine with some cross checks, and he's gonna get the puck away. One on two here for Anderson, toe drag effort. And he will just go back with it. 23 seconds into the Illini man advantage, it's cleared back down. Illinois got to get the offense going faster. We saw last time the power play. Uh, not that many shots on that one, just because it took about a minute to get set up. And that opening face off, they couldn't control it there. An uncharacteristic play from them. Here is Bobby Ernsting, diving his way through the middle. It is Crookshank along the left circle. Wouldn't this be a great time to get goal number 70? Now it's Opilka. Lines up Crookshank, one-timer, wide out in front. And the bouncer was cleared away by RMU, 14.43 left in the third. And that's the one-timer you want from Crookshank. Here is Opilka. Over the block eye, over the blue line. His pass was knocked down by a pair of eagles, cleared down, gloved down by Ernsting. On the left circle, remember that play. Opilka, pressure at the top of the slot. It is Ernsting. 43 seconds up in the line of power play. Stuve stepping in, looking for a shot. Down low from a gang. Toe drag, toe drag some more. He shoots up high and off of counter. Cleared away by McGovern to the far side. Kept in by McGang. Nice fake there to create some space. McGang, nice toe drag move. Was poked away. Opilka now for number 25, Stuve and Opilka again. 23 seconds going to the Illini power play. It is Ernsting. Shooting through traffic. Wanded away by Hart and sent down. No shots for Robert Morris, or excuse me, Illinois, on that power play. Robert Morris's defense stands tall. They really cut off that middle of the ice for the Illini. Hold them to the outside. 13.45 left in the third period. Five seconds left. Minor to score Illis for tripping. And we're back to five on five. Here is Jack Graham through to the middle. Pass came in the skates and it's cleared up into the crowd. And of course, there's no delay of game penalty. And the ACHA from a clearance from the defensive zone. It's just a defensive zone faceoff for RMU. 13.33 left in the third. As Pat Foley would say, down to Eric Fisher at ice level. Yeah, these Illini power plays have been looking pretty solid here tonight, but RMU's done a great job of classing guys in front of the net when the puck is right, right in the middle of the crease. Guys are getting in there and they're getting the puck out of the zone very well, making sure the Illini don't have any rebound opportunities. Dan Doyle on the end boards. Now for Borowski to Malsby along the near side, chopped out. Rittendale races for it against Lepic, and this will be icing. At 6.42, and Chico Adratis does not have a timeout if he wants to use it throughout any latter portion of this hockey game. Yeah, so let's see if that comes back to bite them now. That was a questionable decision about this same time in the second period, and now a pretty tired unit for the Eagles if they want to get something going quick off the draw. We're glad you joined us. Christian Simonetta, Stephen Cohn alongside Eric Fisher down at ice level. Illinois looking for that tying goal. Down one nothing with 13.15 left in the third. Richter goes down at Stephen Quinn. Goes along the goal line, stopping and starting is the Darien, Illinois native. Richter keeps going. Look at the speed. He keeps the puck in on the blue line, too. Far side. It is Rittendale throwing one. Blocked down in front and a glove save there by Mallon. 7.02 into the third period. Time ticking off that clock, Stephen. It may not be much after long intervals of play because, there's, like I said, 13 minutes left, but there's time coming off the clock nonetheless, and Illinois is still down one. And Illinois needs to play a little better uh, close to Crease. Stephen Quinn was fighting for a position, but Cacciato uh, held him to the outside, inside, wasn't able to get in the way. Moskaluk spinning one out in front off the skate of Lepic. Here comes Kandati, shoots one wide, deflected into the low slot by Wicklin, but out of danger here for Cacciato on the far side into the Illini zone. Stepping in, Cacciato shoots one wide to the cage. Here is Wicklin, tying up Cachado. He instead goes down low. Dahlberg is boarded there from behind, and that's going to be a penalty on Mark Kandati for exactly that. 12.37 left in the third period, and you had to guess that Illinois was going to take the next minor. A big kill for them with Robert Morris going to the power play. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that's one that you don't have to take at this time. That's, uh, that's two minutes. Now there's only 12 minutes left. That's about a sixth of the remaining game. You're going to fight on the PK and uh, try to, it's not Mark and Dottie, it's uh, Mike Turret. Or excuse me, Mike Turret. Goes to the box. Polaz, Ernsting, Opilka, and Caprio. On the draw against Chastine, Malsby, Burback, Doyle, and Holt. And here come the Eagles here. Pass back to the far side. It is a slap shot being faked by Holt. Now for Chastain down low on the goal line. Tight angle shot blocked away from Illinois. It was Caprio there, and Colas steals it. 
And may look to go three on two. Caprio's going to join the rush. Thomas Kolas, left circle, backdoor feed. Off the stick of Ernsting, so he will go back. But Chastain trying to draw a play. And the puck just skitters all the way for Tyler Opilka, who sends one down. 128 left in the line IPK. Uh, Chastain, nice job uh, holding Ernsting and not letting him get in open space. Mr. Third period, Eric Cruikshank out there right now. Chastine skates around him to the right side. Back for Holt, winds and fires, blockers, save, rebound try as Barnhart lost his crease momentarily. Burback had that rebound try. Holt will shoot again as they go back door, and a save there by Barnhart on the one-timer. It is turned around in front, and wide open chance for Burback, the captain, but he lifted it too high. Barnhart's recovering very quickly right now, getting back to the net. And I think Robert Morris is observing that and wants to move this puck even quicker. 50 seconds left on the PK. Sam Turner walking the line, winds up, shoots. Locked down by Barnhart, it is McGing. Chipping one for Crookshank, wide of his stick, but he will be the first one to get it on the four check. 11-15, left in the third period, and a smart play from Crookshank to just slap this one back. And they'll play pitch and catch here as the puck almost goes into the RMU bench. 11:03 left in the third period. I like what James McGing was doing there. He was trying to draw too many men on the ice penalty. Here is Anderson, right circle. Nice move around, toe drag in front, and counter. Wanted one of the near side where it's Martin. 14 seconds left on the PK. Caprio stole it. Anderson retrieved it from him. Back to the left point, scored Illis. Pressured by Homer, and that shot goes wide. Opilka recovers on his backhand and sends it up for counter. To even strength we go. A big kill from Illinois. Not a lot of pressure from RMU. It's counter. Left side. Trailer. Caprio, he's in. And he was tied up. Ryan Martin right in his kitchen. 10-28. Left in the third period. 1-0 RMU. Almost kept in by Stephen Quinn. He goes out to the middle. Saucer play over for Opilka. Some fun action here now at even strength. Allen will tend the puck and send it to the far side where it's Caprio and Anderson. Caprio really trying to get involved in the offense right now. As Opilka is too high circle. Tyler's in. He shoots just wide of the blocker side. Ten minutes exactly left in the third period. The defense seemed to be the guys leading the rush here. It's been the case all season. Here is Novosel to left point. Caprio right side for Opilka. Shoots intentionally wide for Novosel. 9.45 left in the third. Down low here for Wicklin. He goes on the back end. Nice pass for Quinn. Quinn shields the puck away from Anderson. Slap shot there from Neely. Just missed wide. Here is Caprio. An extended shift for Illinois on this near side change for RMU. And they'll finally be able to get to it as Quinn heads off. Off the skate of Floro and down the ice. Caprio winded on this shift with 9.20 left in the third. And he just iced the puck, so Nick Fabrini may use his timeout. 9.18 left in the third period. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's going to, but an extended shift for the line. They're getting some pressure on Malin, but can they get one of those redirects? They're starting to come. Can the forwards get involved? Can Eric Crookshank get a goal? A lot of questions right now for Illinois as they're starting to look a little bit frustrated on the ice. Looking a little bit gassed, too, after these shifts. Win there from Novacell. It's a smart play for Barnhart to hold on because change up personnel for Illinois. 9-16 left in the third period. Robert Morris up 1-0. And I was saving that time out. It was a good decision by Nick Favorini because only won the draw. Went right to Barnhart. Crookshank against Yanni at even strength play. Number 15 won it now for Grammel on the near side, Crookshank. Deking around Stuve. Here comes Eric Crookshank gaining the line, shoots, and that's blocked wide open. The captain scores! Joey Redden now make it five in five straight games. 9.05 left in the third. We're tied. That might be the biggest goal of Joey Randell's Illinois career. There haven't been that many of them, and it seems like all of them come the past month. But a humongous goal. In a playoff scenario game, playoff field game for Illinois. Oh, Captain, my captain, Joey Rittendale. We talked about him during the intermission, saying how uh, Nick Fabrini said he told him before the season that he was going to be offensive uh, fire, firepower. But, I mean, he comes out here tonight, throws a shot, puts Illinois right back in the game, and momentum on their side. Is anyone surprised at this point? Did you expect James McGinger crookshank to score in senior night? I didn't. It's all Joey Reno right now. But the game still goes on. Ernsting drops one for counter. Now it's Ballsby over the block. Eye blue line right side. Armio trying to respond quickly. He will double back. 
Joey Rittenale, five goals in his last five games. A five-game goal-scoring streak unparalleled for this defenseman. But a spinning try here over the glove and deflected into the netting by Caprio. Joey Rittendale, man, 18 points in his junior year, 17 points right now as a senior. His 13th career goal, eighth goal of the season. He's reaching. He's reaching up yep. there in the top listings for Illinois among the goal scorers. And he's become such a sniper. He just takes the pass the right circle and just throws it on the net. Great play. Daniel Reader writes around. I think it's all been Joey Randall as of late. Goldberg, right pad save there by Barnhart off the faceoff. And Robert Morris sensing blood in the water here after this shift. Illinois not too strong after they score goals, which seems to be the opposite. And now it's wrapped out in front. Now here's scored Ellis winds and fires the right pad save there by Barnhart again. Here is Richter. Red line, blue line, far side going wide. He has Homer in backdoor play. Instead, he'll hold on to it with 8-12 left in the third. Caprio holding, shooting, Lieber deflection wide of the cage, just wide of the glove side. Dahlberg chips it down. It's gonna be a one-on-one. -on -one. Lepic against Caprio both. Tired of their shifts and a high hit there from Lepic on Caprio to defend himself in a legal manner. Left point here, Borowski. Right side Holt. He shoots, gloved by Barnhart. And he stumbled with it. But he holds 7.51 left in the third period. And if you're an Illini fan, you want that time ticking off the clock. Yeah, oh, Illinois gets, gets that overtime. point. They, of course, qualify for the semifinal of the CSCHL tournament. And Lepic might have had a breakaway opportunity. He was the only man down the ice. Joey Kemper was able to cut him off, get there fast enough. And now Robert Moore is forced to set up. Here is Graham to the near side. Grant Stuve for Eric Cruikshank. Wouldn't the script be outstanding if one of these seniors was able to score? Shot there going wide. It is Stuve. Can't get to that one as the ricochet from that pass comes all the way back. The RMU zone. It is McGang crashing into his fellow senior in Crookshank. 7.25 left in the third period. Tied at one. Rare miscommunication from the two forwards. Here comes Turner. Right circle. Fires. Pad save. Rebound. Swept away by guess who? The captain. McGing going against Martin. One on two. Spin arounds. And now he's protected and checked off the puck. Here is Holt to the far side. Borowski. Fourth line out for Illinois. And Steven, I always say it, but this line is due for a goal. Yeah, right now they got to play some defense in neutral ice. Dumped in by Turner. Him and Moscow can save some shoves, perhaps over who can keep that number, because they're both wearing 17. Probably not, though. Here is Graham. Skating left circle, stopping. 6.45 left in the third period. Was that the last goal the Illini will score in this building? Looking for more Wicklin. Stop there. Andrew Hi, Wicklin. He's got five shots in the game. Oh, 6.42 left in the third. Is that is that James McGing in an Andrew Wicklin jersey? What is this? Oh, my. Is it Halloween already? <laughs> Eric Fisher down at ice level. You got anything, Eric? I mean, he's just come out here on a mission tonight. He He's hungry for the goal. He's hungry to finally be an impact for his team on these divisional games. I mean, he's making the most of his opportunity here tonight. Moskaluk along the left circle, tying up a man that was scored. Illis to the far side. Here is Wicklin again, being the first of the puck, and he's oh. taken down by Rizzo away from the play. No call there, as it was right within that two to three feet range before it was deemed interference. Here comes Yanni. On that right side with 6.23 left in the third period. Moskaluk, very active stick right now in Yanni. And Moskaluk will get the puck again. All he's going to do is send it up and down, but will this go the length for icing? We'll find out. No! Wow! That was as close as you possibly could get. 6.08 left in the third. We play on. If you're just joining us, Joey Rittendale. He's been the story the past five games. Five goals in as many. And a race here. Kanati just beats out Josh Hart. 5.57 left in the third period. If you're just joining us, why'd you wait till the 32nd game of the season? <laughs> I just mean on the broadcast tonight. It's senior night. Come on. Yeah, we. It's a Saturday night. We're on YouTube all year. You don't want to miss this. It's been a successful year for the program. Illinois trying to add to it now onto the ice. As of course, we'll take credit for any success they amassed this year. Number five in the country. Here is Ernsting. Now back Kendati. Could he give it to Mike Turek? The unlikely hero. This team tipped on just high by Ernsting. 5:49 left in the third. It is counter. Kept in by Kandati. And Mark Kandati battling for it here. Spinning one down low, and a smart play was knocked down by Kolaz. He takes a hit. 
Puck comes back for Stover. The freshman spins confidently, but almost turned the puck over. Very aggressive forecheck by the Illini. And why wouldn't they be? Puck flipped all the way down. It's Kandati. Icing is the call, and wow. I don't know if that's the right call, and I don't think it is, because if it's right over Kanadi's head, he stops skating because he's watching the puck, but these officials have got to start hammering out these icing calls properly. Illinois is going to benefit from it, but if you're an RMU fan, you have to be just outraged that the fact that these clears, and Chico Dras at the front of his yeah, bench oh, right now giving it to him. That's about three times tonight there's been questionable icing calls. Uh, this refereeing crew, not on a take game. Doyle with Crookshank, Joey Caprio left circle. Shooting, reflected wide, my goodness. There was Doyle, there was Hart, and there was also Crookshank. Out of the far side, McGing. And Crookshank takes a hit to the face, and that's gonna be a whistle. 5.04 left in the third period. Doyle with some choice words for him, and both of them are gonna go. Wow. Eric Crookshank has to call himself right now. Coincidental Miners? That's going to be Coincidental Miners. You got one for embellishment, the other for roughing. Favors Illinois, that 4-4 four four play we talk about all the time. Some big ice. Some big names in the penalty box right now. It's James McGing's moment, maybe, on that 4-4. Four and four. But a defenseman can also jump into the rush. We've seen yeah. Caprio with some chances, and they've gone blocker side. One blocker side on Chris Mayon the yeah. entire game. So look for that. That's how they got the one goal. It's how Joey Randall got it tonight. Happened a few times last night as well, two of the three goals. McGing and Ernsting, the best duo in the ACHA at four on four. I know I haven't seen every single team 100%, but here is Caprio, left circle, winds, fires out just wide of the glove. A seeing eye shot from the senior. Missed with 454 left. Chastine and Burback, also a deadly duo. Here's the setup. Burback right circle, shoots blocked by Caprio. McGing lifts the stick of Burback. Have to be careful here in the offensive zone for RMU and the defensive for Illinois. He can't take a penalty. Rizzo. Down low, and here is Chastine interchanging with Burback. It's man on man here, Steven. Now to the top of the point, scored Illis. Backdoor Rizzo. On the backhand toss, and again a block from Caprio, and he will just skate it out of his own zone with 423 left in the third. And about another handful of blocks tonight from Joey Caprio, senior defenseman. And another swipe there. He'll come off Ernsting and McGing as well. Counter. Steps onto the ice, Chastine. Down low for Alex Anderson. Going wide on a forward encounter. He spins off Alex Anderson. Trying to drive. Counter's going to stay right with him. Interchanges with Holt. Anderson. To the right circle, drops one, Dylan Holt with, guess who, number two, Joey Rittenell shadowing him, and he's gonna block down the pass and get the puck back. 3.50 left in the third period. Homer takes down a man that was Borowski, but look at David Counter, may get a race. One-on-one, -on -one. oh, but the puck was just outside of his blade, and he takes a hit and keeps going, but forgot the puck. It's Dylan Holt, 35 seconds left, the four-on-four. Four. Alex Anderson down the right wing side, holding it, takes a slash. Absorbs it, and fan of the puck, Chance Holbert in the clear! Save made by Malin! Oh, Alex Anderson with a crucial mistake there. Here is Graham, winds, fires just wide of the blocker as well. RMU dodging some bullets, Illinois dodging some fire as well, and Novacell with the breakup. Goes along the far side, chipped in front for Moskal. Five seconds going four on four. 308 left to go in the third. Moskal has no help along that right point. Goes down low for Neil against Yanni. On the far side corner. Chipped there for Moscow. He sends it around on the outside of the cage. Look out! Cleared away to the far side. We're back to five on five, of course. Andrew Wicklund just a second late on a chance to get that rebound. Two on two. Yanni late on his shift. Goes down low for Martinez. Plaster to the boards there by Novacell. Moscow to the near side. A big hit there. The Illini bench wants a call. They're not gonna get it. It is Rittendale. Two and a half to go in the third period. Graham with Moscow laid on his shift. He tips one in. Or at least he tried to, and now Hart sends one to the middle. Josh Hart goes off sides. This one's gonna be whistled down if he touches it. He instead does not. 2.17 left in the third. Illinois has to survive two more minutes. They can score a goal, just don't give up one. Maybe a rush off the chance. Stuve fell down three on two. As it is Doyle with Crookshank out. And two on two, Malsby. Going into the circles, Cody Mosby's in, left pad save there by Barnhart. That was sticked far wide of the crease. 
Objects in your mirror may be closer than they appear. As now it's to the center of Stuve. Nice pass there from Crookshank. Rather to him. A shot from Crookshank off the blocker of Malin. A dump in there with under two minutes to go in the third period. If you expected a great game on senior night, this is exactly it. Caprio to Opilka. Who's going to be the hero here for both of these teams? Uh, Crookshank and McGing, I think. One of them's going to get the puck in a big situation. Chastine as well with Burback and Anderson. Here is Crookshank. Great pass. Back door. McGing's wide open on the right circle. Had to regain. Now left side Caprio. He'll make the safe play. And backhand one into the corner. Caprio's been on the ice for a while with this point. Looks kind of tired. Crookshank. Now for Scordillis. And again, McGing fighting. He's always got that extra nitrous. Now back to the right point. Rittendale, the goal scorer, tied this game up. Crookshank with a nice quick pass. Steals the puck back with 70 seconds to go in the third period. Rittendale for Caprio, left side. Here he comes. He shoots, looking for a deflection wide. Out in front, Stuve can't whack at it. And McGing kept the puck in along the high slot. Under a minute to go, he sends one on, blocked away. Now it is Malsby. Deking around Caprio, Illinois has to get back. Three on three, Malsby slap shot, blocked by the captain. And a big hit there as well by Rittendale on Malsby. With Burback, boarded to the end glass by McGing. They're gonna hold it, and why not? Illinois yeah, knows no, the situation yeah. right now. RMU will play in the play-in game if they're unable to generate any points here. 30 seconds, Illinois just can't give up a goal. Here is Caprio. Makes the safe play for Ernsting. Going through the middle, chips winning cross corner. Bumped by a pair of Eagles with 20 to go in the third period. Now to the left side, it's Jack Graham. Why not just eat it if you're Illinois? To the far side, it is Rittendale. Gets the line, what's he gonna do, Steven? Just dump it right in. Great idea. 10 seconds left in the third period. Kellner is boarded there. To the far side, it goes five seconds left. Four, three, two, and one. We're gonna go to overtime on senior night, and Illinois is headed to the semifinals of the CSCHL. Wow, it's like they just won a playoff game in that situation, all because they sent a game to overtime. The third period goal from Joey Randall does it. It's 1-1, folks, at the Big Bonds. Christian Sumetta with you. Stephen Cohen alongside Eric Fisher down at ice level. I told Danny, our cameraman, before the game, this game was going to overtime, and look what happened. Yep. You got an overtime winner. Eric Fisher, we'll start with you. Oh, man, I mean, you have to look at Joey Randall in overtime. I mean, you have to. With the guys done in these clutch situations like that in these last couple weekends, it's just been phenomenal. But someone you really got to talk about, and that we haven't really talked about at all this game, is the performance by Jake Barnhart in between the pipes. The guy has just been unstoppable. I mean, he's allowed one goal through six periods against the number six ranked team in the ACHA. I mean, that's just an outstanding performance from a backup goaltender, and he's going to have to continue with that performance here in this overtime period if Illinois wants to get, to get the sweep this weekend. And, and let's see now. He has two overtime game-winning goals in the past three weekends, both those coming on the road. Does Joey Randell's magic also extend the champagne as he looks for his third overtime game-winning golden goal in four weekends? Joe Nolan led this team previously with five game-winning goals. It is, or excuse me, four game winning goals. Now it's Rittendale with five. Nolan not on the ice. Actually in street clothes for this weekend after he's dealing with an upper body injury he suffered last weekend against Athens, Ohio based Ohio University. And this is going to be a fun one because this is going to be an intense five minutes of hockey that Jake Barnhart has not been accustomed to in a three-on-three -three atmosphere. Chris Mallon has, RMU has not lost a game in overtime this season. And if you're Chico Adronas, who are your three guys you bring out there to start for Urban Warriors? Because the first minute or so could decide the overtime period. Depends how aggressive he is, but I think he'll like to go with Alex Anderson, Dan Doyle, and maybe Gavin Burbeck, three forwards. But if he wants to throw in that defense, which I think he should, Chris Scordillis has stood out to me, Connor McGovern as well. But we switch ends here. Illinois going from left to right. RMU going from right to left. Overtime is three seconds away before we get set for that faceoff. Nick Fabrini's going to go with Kowaz, Ernsting, and Opilka. So he's not, that first shift's not going to have Rinnendale or Crookshank or McGing. Maybe wait, wait a minute or so for that. Test out the waters first. Kolaz was the reason why Illinois had that chance late in overtime against Ohio. He won a board battle and just sped directly up the ice. His speed is a factor here. Yeah. Tyler Opilka. Scoring defenseman. And Bobby Ernsting, one of the best hands on this team, against Chastine, the goal scorer, Gavin Burback, Dylan Holt. So I was 0 for 3. And that trio will be back next year for Illinois, so don't be concerned. This team's only getting better. 
Face off control by RMU, delayed offsides. Illinois has to regroup. Burback goes one on two. Left circle. He goes down low. Ernsting has to help out. He canceled him out momentarily. Opilka has Chastine. Cole has drops it for Ernsting. Nice play there from RMU, but Ernsting with a recovery. He'll go behind that around Burback. And drops one for Opilka. 435 left in overtime. Who can get that one break or that one edge is the goal here in overtime? Colas trying to be that guy. He'll go around defending well against Chastain. One in on a six, spinning one out in front. Here is Ernsting. Look out. Two on one for Robert Morris. It is Chastain on the backhand. Nice move. Barnard out to play it. Oh, and Burbeck would have had a wide open six by four. But the mere presence of the goal stick of Barnhart. Defended it away with 4.10 left in the overtime frame. Dylan Holt, right circle, digging to his back, and he lost the puck, and Ernsting flips one around to the far side. Near side change here for Robert Morris, but they dumped the puck in. Wow. That's a questionable move there. Wow. Illinois was tired, and James McGain's on the ice. And how many more chances is Robert Morris going to get that deep in Illinois' zone? Here is Opilka tied up. Plays it ahead for McGain. Nice hit play. And he knocks the puck down. Opilka lost it. The other way, Sam Turner. Crookshank back there, it is Turner. Crookshank slides and takes the play away. Back door, nice block from Opilka. Crookshank plays the puck back, 333. Left in overtime, it is McGing. And look who's just stepped out on the ice. It's the captain and he's got the puck now. One on one against McGovern. Rittendale left circle, dropping one for McGing. That one was read by Doyle and Dan Doyle trying to beat Eric Crookshank. He may be able to do so, but Crookshank bodies him off the puck. And keeps going. Nice pass. Rittendale. McGing. Two on one. Two seniors. Can they do it? Wide of the net. Oh, my goodness. James McGing. That slap shot just missed. And now Crookshank playing it through McGovern's legs. Rittendale in the low slot. 2.59 left in overtime. Out in front. Tipped. And Crookshank with a big hit to the right point. It is McGing. James McGing. Nice stop and start move. Here he comes. Out to the middle. Crookshank was clearly hooked by Doyle. And there's going to be no call. Spun out to the high slot. Kicked there by McGing. He plays it for a fresh Jack Graham, the junior. The first-year defenseman at this D1 club. He circles Illinois with the near side change. Uh, obvious hooking on Eric Crookshank in front of the net. It's overtime hockey. Sometimes the whistles, sometimes the rule books are thrown away. Kellner battling against McGovern behind the net. Now it's Doyle late on his shift. Richter on him, behind the net, a risky play, and Graham is gonna try and pinch. Turner is exhausted, as is Doyle. They spin it away. Illinois trying to catch Army on a change with 2.13 left in overtime. Three on two, Richter, shoot, save made there by Mallon, and we will get a whistle. How's everybody's heart rate doing 2.52 in overtime? Eric Fisher, how's yours? I can't deal with this right now. I'm just coming <laughs> off a bottle right now. Come on now. So, I mean, everyone on the bench on this side, they're all yelling right now. There's not a single person sitting down during the play. I mean, when Rittendale came to the bench after his shift, he yelled, go, like, at top of his lungs. I mean, it got me jumping a little bit. I mean, this, the intensity level in this game right now is just through the roof. Here comes Nick Rizzo, the defenseman, one-on-one -on -one against Opilka. He'll take him wide right circle. Nick Rizzo's in, wide of everything. And that will go into the netting with two minutes exactly left in overtime. That's a situation where that's not an ideal shot from Rizzo. Get it off the boards, get it off the goalpost, anything. Get a rebound. Don't try to go with the draw when you have Illinois and you have an advantage. McGing, Ernsting, and Opilka, and why not? Against Chastine Burback. Who Burback's a little tired here after that opening shift, as well as Chastine. But when it's overtime hockey, CSCHL points on the line. You have no fatigue level. Ernsting moves his men toward the goal to block any offense shot. Here is Burback. To the near side corner, dropped one. Chastine may have a chance to trap it, but he missed it. And now here's McGing. 145 left in overtime. Ernsting cutting along that far side blue line. McGing to the middle. We've seen this story before. He drops back, plays it for Bobby. Nice move to the inside. It was red, though. Ernsting will get back in time. But now it is Chastine, almost off sides. Here comes Chastine looking to shoot through traffic on his backhand. Here it comes. Sliding there was Ernsting. Got to watch out for a centering feed here if you're Illinois. Chastine drops one for Burbeck. He lost the puck. Tyler Opilka may have a breakaway. Rizzo will get back. Nice move from Tyler. Chipping it through and a save made by Malin. He will hold. 1-12 left in overtime. And Tyler Opilka 
with the extra burst, but Nick Rizzo just a step faster to negate that breakaway chance for him. You know, Pilgo not known for his speed, no more for his uh, stick handling and just uh, being a really skilled player overall, but uh, this, this crowd is ready to stand up and scream right now, so let's see. RMU chips the puck ahead. It's going to be a race. Brett Lepic and Joey Rittendale, the captain. There's no way he's losing that <laughs> battle. On senior night, the man who tied it for the freshman transfer in Kolas for the first-year player in Moskluk. Top of your screen, John Moskluk with under a minute to go in overtime. He passes the puck through, and that was wide. Look out, Jake Barnhart will have to go play this one as he has Moskluk in behind. Oh, boy, that was a little risky there. And Moskluk goes behind, wins his battle, and has Kolas to the near side. He settles it down. Tom Kolas now on the right wing side, one-on-one. -on -one. Nice move, Cole out to the toe drag, and Holt defended well. Cleared away by RMU, and Jack Graham, the junior, is the next guy called up and launched around with 25 seconds to go in overtime. We may need a shootout. And Illinois is known for scoring overtime goals late. Here's Jack Graham, two on one. Richter to the front of the net, tip is there. I think Chris Mellon's hurt after that one. But if you're looking at the play, it's Jack Graham to Richter. The Richter gets the rebound and puts it right past now. Mellon's still down, though. So we'll see if that's an injury. But the Atlanta win this one 2 1. And they officially are in the top three of the CSCHL playoffs. And as, of course, the attention goes to Chris Mallon, may have pulled a hip, a hamstring on that one. Illinois with the win. They advance to the CSCHL semifinal. Richter, I just said it, Stephen. The Illini known for scoring overtime goals late. And they do it late. That's as late as it gets. 15.3 seconds left, uh, left on the clock. That last goal call, you know, I knew I had to go up for it. I'm not trying to make this about myself, but that's... A very passion goal. I wasn't going to let up. I knew oh, that no. voice was going to crack there, and I do not care one bit. You deserve that one. It was a great game. Uh. Illinois wins 2-1 over the Robert Morris University Eagles on senior night, but everything is taking a backseat right now to Chris Mallon before the celebration can get underway. And that post-game coverage will involve you uh, interviewing the seniors down at ice level. As Mallon needed to be attended oh. to after that, and they're bringing out the board here. Not looking good for Chris Mallon. And on that extension, as you see the Illini respecting Mallon here, going down to one knee, the entire roster is. Because again, this game is only that. It's a game. And the health of the players is more important. No matter if there's a CSEHL tournament on the line, ACHA national tournament on the line, Chris Mallon's health is the one thing we should be concerned about as of this moment. And it, the Robert Warriors played a great week in both games, highly contested yesterday. Illinois took advantage a little more, but Chris Mallon was the one uh, key factor in Robert Warriors playing so competitively all weekend long. Had a great weekend. You hope he's okay. And Mallon, who's one of the best goaltenders in the CSCHL in terms of wins, in terms of goals against average, this would be a back-breaking blow to not only RMU's chances of moving forward in the CSEHL tournament, even though Cole Semchak was the guy last year. But when you lose your starting goaltender, Illinois knows it firsthand. But how about Jake Barnhart, 8-0 on the season? That's, that's unbelievable. That's a fairy tale story right there from the first year D1 goaltender and Jake Barnhart. Uh, he wasn't someone that uh, had that much playing time earlier this year. And he's been put in the situation, doing a great job as Chris Mallon gets up. Standing ovation from the Illini faithful. Here's Big Buns. Chris Mallon holding his midsection. And he skates off under his own power. Illinois wins 2-1 to one over the Robert Morris University Eagles. I'll hand it off to Stephen Cohn as I go down to ice level. Great. Okay. Well, uh, Illinois takes it 2-1. What else can you say? A great game. Eric Fisher down to you at ice level. Got anything after uh, that you heard on the bench or anything after the game? Uh, I was just talking to Jack Graham about what happened after that play, and then he said it looked like it was a Robert Morris player that maybe caught uh, caught Mono on in the net right there. But, I mean, they brought the stretcher out, but it wasn't needed. So good, good for him to see him come off the ice. But what a huge win for the Illini in general this, this weekend, especially heading into postseason play gives them so much more uh, momentum. I mean, and this team needs momentum right now after get, uh, after just what a struggle this last month has been. They've 
brought the results, but the amount of effort it's taken has just been huge, and so this has to be greatly rewarding. That was Eric Fisher. That might be the last time you heard from him this hockey season. I don't know. He's a, hey, That might be it until next year for him, but we still have Christian Simnetta, who will be down at ice level with the seniors of Illini Hockey and the head coach Nick Fabrini. And uh, we'll be telling them about just their careers for a few minutes. So please stay tuned here in the broadcast on YouTube and WPG 1071 as we bring you line hockey post-game coverage after Illinois' 2-1 to win over the Robert Morris Eagles as they take the series sweep game majority of the points and avoid playing in the playing game in the CSCHL playoffs beginning next weekend in Athens, Ohio, the same place. Uh, Eric went over there, Chris Jones. You're on the far side right now. Eric uh, went, went off the ice the other way. So I don't know if Chris Jones uh, can't even see right now. Confusing play. He's over there. Yeah, okay. Well, great. He can't even hear me. But thanks for staying. The seniors right now at down at ice level. Hugging, holding it out, and um, we'll see if they get off the ice. That's where Chris Jones is going to talk to them. But please stay tuned here. As we bring you post-game coverage, Jake Barnhart skating off the ice to some applause. Andrew Wicklin gives him a little rub on the helmet. Just an outstanding series, outstanding three games from the first-year goaltender here at the D1 level. Jake Barnhart, who is not disappointing anyone in the absence of David Heflin. David Heflin likely to show up again. Come back. That's the goal for him. Come back. Be back in action next weekend. Uh when Illinois begins in the CSCHL tournaments in the semifinals on Saturday in Ohio. Fans starting to clear out. Cristiano is still going down toward ice level to get the microphone, talk to the players down at ice level. That will be off camera, though, so you will be able to, uh, you'll hear it, but the, the camera stream will still just be uh, just the center of the ice, the block guy here at the Big Ponds, historic Big Ponds. On the campus of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. So, I'm Stephen Cohn, Chris Jones, Simnetta. Join me all game, all season long. I'll say a few words about him right now because I haven't uh, been told he's right yet. So, uh, I don't know. you're going to go back and listen to this, Cristiano, but uh, just thank you. You're the most dedicated person I've ever seen in this industry. Uh, you have so, you've too many connections. Like, I'm kind of jealous. I wish I had that many connections. And uh, you're going to do amazing things the rest of your broadcasting career, and I'll just... Uh, and hey, no, who knows, maybe one day when Illinois is a NCAA Division I hockey team, hopefully in the next three to four years, as the feasibility study is uh, trying to work out that the goal is, that uh, maybe we come back, we're the play-by-play -play and color guy for uh, Illini hockey, but the NCAA style, not just ACHA. But another fantastic season, another fantastic broadcasting season from uh, everyone at WPGU and also our team here at YouTube. That's Eric Fisher, Mackenzie Bach. Abby Calisto, Daniel Williams back at the board. It's just been a great season overall. 23 wins for the Illini. I feel like I'm Vince Scully in this thing right now. Just doing it all by myself. It's okay, Abby. You can pick up the you can pick up the mic. You got anything to say? Any final thoughts about the season? Sure. You know, I'll make a few final thoughts in the home season. <laughs> Good job there. Um, well, first, I want to give it to the underdog, Jake Barnhart. Jake was going into the season. We didn't really think he was going to go out of playing time, and turns out. He got the W when he played all the times that he did, and that's awesome. Um, David Heflin, also a great season, even though sadly he didn't get to play tonight. But there are a lot of younger guys that it kind of shows us that we should have some confidence going into the next couple years with some people getting picked up, like um, Joe Nolan. He's going to step into that leadership position, like I was mentioning earlier, as we're going to see um, some, a bunch of our senior class walk out. We're going to lose a lot of good spots, but we're looking pretty good right now with Luke Forfar coming back. Thomas Kolas is new this year, and he shows a lot of potential where he's playing on the first line. Yeah, those two guys, Luke Forfar, rejoined the team this spring uh, season, this spring semester. Hasn't gotten that much playing time, but you'll still be joined the team again next year for a full season. Uh, a lot more playing time coming for him. Thomas Kolas came from Springfield just last month. Instant impact uh, for the freshmen. Then guys like Bobby Ernsting, uh, Bobby Ernsting, uh, he'll be back. David Kilner won't. And then you'll get that second line, though, usually a top line. Um, at this top line. Uh, Grant Stuve, Eric Crookshank, James McGing. That's where Illinois is going to feel the most pain, but guys are going to step up in that space. And Illinois has a bright future ahead. Right, exactly. And Drew Richter, another guy that we just got this year, has really stepped up. He scored that overtime goal for us. He got the W on senior night, and that's hey, like, really exciting hey, stuff. Hey, hey, hey. hey guys. Oh, hey, that was fun. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> I, I had fun tonight. You guys had fun. That was a, that was a crazy goal by Drew Richter at the end there. I mean, 
Christian, I was just talking to Cristiano. I mean, he called that goal too. He was like, Illinois is known for scoring late in these overtimes, and then great play by Jack Graham along the boards, a really attack on that right wing, and then you had, um, and then you you just had a streaking Drew Richter down there and really just poked that puck right in the back of the net, and that's just. This is huge for Illinois going into the postseason as well. To get a huge sweep like this against the number six ranked team in the country gives you a lot of momentum going forward, and especially when you have a couple guys banged up like Joe Nolan. So just a great, great series, great W for them. And Jake Barnhart, you have to give him a shout out. He's gave, only gave up one goal and well, only gave only gave up one goal this weekend. I mean, just huge performance by the backup netminder. Uh, our our camera stream's gone off, but the seniors still skating down to ice level. They will. Uh, they're going to take some pictures, have a good time. They're going to talk to Cristiano. It's going to be a nice moment right here. David Heflin in a suit looking dapper. We can't see that, but he is looking He's looking uh, fine. It's a three-piece suit. It looks nice. Cristiano uh, with Joey Randale. You guys are going to take a first skate around here before we get into any interviews, guys. Amazing. We don't have a video, a quick by the one. way. Kellen uh, says it'll be a quick a, one with we, how fast they skate. Oh, uh, okay. We put away the camera, by the way, so we own a video of this. No, but we're this good. is a big moment for these guys, and uh, you always want to see your last game at home end in a victory, and none better than something like that with a guy like Drew Richter, a freshman, a first-year guy in this program, ending it for Illinois. Yeah, just an amazing moment, uh, amazing night, amazing, uh, I think just a four-year, uh, there's been better moments in the Illinois hockey program history. They won the national championship in 05 and 08, but I don't think there's been a better group of guys that's been more successful overall on and off the ice uh, than this senior group. Yeah, just a very well-accomplished group in general. Guys that really set the tone for this program and what it really means to be an Illini, and they make uh, wearing that sweater a real honor for anyone that wants to be a part of this team. They just really set high standards for what this program is going to perform on and off the ice. And Stephen Cohn, Eric Fisher, I really appreciate you guys filibustering here as we're trying to get everything oh, settled in Illinois with a 2-1 victory. And before we get to the on-ice interviews with the seniors, we're going to do it live streamed on Twitter. Once again, that'll be live streamed on Twitter for all that uh, action there. And we can promote it on our Facebook group. So I first just want to say this has been the best four years of my professional career uh, and really my life. I've always wanted to do this play-by-play uh, -play ever since I was two or three years old. And I just the support of my family throughout this entire journey has really led me to this moment. And I always knew it was going to come to an end at home. And what other way to end it? Uh, with Drew Richter scoring that overtime winner. So thank you to the fans. Thank you to the parents. Thank you to my parents, Nikki and Anthony, for supporting me. My brothers, Rich, Dom, my sister-in-laws, Lauren, and Brittany, and my little niece, Viviana, and all the rest of my, my extended family, Uncle Chris, Aunt Marianne, Kelly, Katie. You know who you are. This is just a fun night. Illinois, 2-1 victory, and most importantly, last home broadcast for me, and I know I'm leaving it in good hands. Abby Kelsto, Mackenzie Bach, Daniel Williams, as well, Stephen Cohn. Hey, Eric Fisher. Nice why, job as well. Good to see last? you back. I want to be last. What is this? Oh my goodness. I've never heard someone say they want to be last or something. I, I thought you were saying an emotional goodbye for me, but no, no, now it's just Eric and Eric Fisher. I'm not an emotional guy. I think, I think you can ask a lot of my ex-girlfriends. That's just I've had a <laughs> wow. tough time connecting. But back to a serious note. Thank you again to everybody who listened, everybody who watched. If you clicked on a highlight reel. And hey, we're going to let uh, Mackenzie Bach just jump in for a few seconds. And of course, Mackenzie Bach down up top. <laughs> hey, just uh, final thoughts on the season. If he can hook up his mic, let's see if <laughs> let's see if uh, the Mackenzie can do it. But I mean, final thoughts on the season. It's it's been. I mean, we've had a lot of ups and downs. Um, <laughs> as we've seen all season, we would we would get a win. Um, and then we'd come back the next night uh, feeling a little overconfident. Um, but it's been like that all season. And I feel like with, at the, with the remaining, the last games we've had so far, the most recent games, um, we've been able to overcome the, those issues that we've been seeing all season um, and, and really come into every game giving it our all no matter what the, what the uh, situation is. Um, so props to these, uh, <laughs> these gentlemen out there standing on the ice taking pictures right now for pulling it together and uh, you know, <laughs> pulling out a, a phenomenal sweep this, this weekend especially. Um, and now we, we still have more games to come uh, on the, the coming weekends and uh, big CSCHL tournament. So wishing these guys luck, and uh, we will be with you guys the whole way.
Thank you, Mackenzie Bach, and I really appreciate you being on staff for the past couple of years. Abby Kelsto as well, helping out. Eric Fisher, Danielle Williams, always our girl up in the board. Danny on camera, and of course, Nick, Nikhil, all the guys at WPG, the reason we're on the broadcast. And yes, Stephen Cohn, uh. leaving the broadcast in your hands. <laughs> and like I mentioned before, I don't know if I could leave it in any other of a better state with all you guys and gals manning the fort. So for everybody here at Illini Hockey, these are not our last games of the season, maybe the regular season. We'll be back next week in Athens, Ohio for the CSCHL tournament. This is Cristiano Simonetta, finally, for the last time at the Big Pond Ice Surface, signing off. This has been Illini Hockey presented by WPGU 107.